Oh, hi. How are you going? Yeah, really good, thanks. Yeah, thanks very for good. asking. Yeah, there we go. Back chat, we are here. Now, I had a bit of an idea during the week. Um, I think it's a good one. You've got, I often, maybe three texts a day from you with an idea. Yeah. Which one do you want to talk about first? Do you like that, that I text you when I just have an idea? Yeah, Or would you good. rather me save them up, potentially forget them? and they're gone? No, no, text me every day. doesn't matter. Well, no, like I'm, I'm going to text you every day, but like <laughs> you enjoy the ideas. Like, No, I do. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Big ideas. I've, I've, I've texted friends about about a thousand podcast ideas I've had. Do you want to show you one now? Is one of them <laughs> podcast? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought about this idea for a podcast. Okay. Okay. So you find people who have um, gotten rewards from police for giving intel on crimes. Oh, yeah. So it seems like a limited amount of people. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you know like one person that that's happened to? No, so you find them. And you go, oh, oh, yeah. how much is the reward? What did you tell? Oh my the God. The process. You would literally have about three people globally that would <laughs> sit on your podcast. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's all we've got time for, <laughs> episode three. No, what, what my, my idea that mm. I am talking about is Backman and Backwoman yep. merch. Mm, back people. Yeah. Now, back chat. We, you've seen us. We're in the back chat merch a little bit. Mm. Um, you wore one a couple of weeks ago. I wore one a couple of weeks ago. We're going to pull the back chat merch. We're going to ramp that up a little yeah, bit. It's finally week. happening. We've talked about it for a while. But this idea is sort of cast out of that, is back chat for back people. Mm. So I want to I want to create a bit of a line for backs all over this great land of ours. Yes. And I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to send it out to all of the key defenders, all the role-playing defenders, all the small defenders, all the defenders across the league Yep, that that know what's up. Mm-hmm. And they know the mids and the forwards. They're all just pretty boys and girls yep. playing up a field, taking all the glory. I want something for the people. Yeah. And that's for the backs of this world. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking we're going to do T-shirts with forwards, sign memberships, mids, Sign and sponsorships and backs winning Win premierships. premierships. Yeah, like back it. six gets chicks. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's good. Uh, right. Just just role playing, dower, defending type images. That people who know what's up mm-hmm. get it. Okay. What do you think about that? I really like it. I do too. I'm going to put a bit of work into it. I think we need to speak to someone who has some sort of graphic skills, like throughout our. More than you and I. Yeah, yeah. No, if we made them, they'll be they'll be awful. We, we've we've got people we can we can connect with, and we'll make some great merch, and we'll sell it. Special deal for Patreon members. Yeah, it'll be good. It. It'll go it. big. All right, you you heard it here first on back chat. That's right. You know where to find us across socials. Back chat double underscore on all the major ones. You can email us at hello at backchatpodcast.com today. You you can find all of it backchatpodcast.com au. You can listen. You can watch. You can listen and watch. Yep. You can do you the can thing. just watch without listening. You Not can find us on Reddit. I don't know what happens over there. Patreon's going strong. Beautiful people that support us over at Patreon. Our patrons, over 200 of you. Beautiful things happening there. We're bringing you some discounts. We've got a couple of things in the works yeah, as we yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very Discounts good. for patrons. One of them is Whippersnapper. Mm-hmm. The great whiskey distributor. Globally recognised. Yeah. Some of the best, well, well, no, the best, the best, the best whiskey. whiskey in the world. Okay, cask strength whiskey. You like that? Single grain. Yep, you like it. Yep, a snapper looking after us. Um, we've got a couple on the way for that too. Mm-hmm. Um, what am I missing here? Um, I know what I'm missing. What are you missing? Fantasy football is. Ah, uh, how, how I are tend the teams to, going? Much like what just happened, then often forget about it. Um, like what? my team. Yeah, we've spoken about this. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I only had two or three or f- maybe four at the most DMPs um, in my team. And look, I don't have a great team. And it's hard when you start bad, no. it's hard to I mean, we can tell the people, I, I, I gave you a team once over. I was around at mm. your house. And yep. I got rid of you, did not play. I said, this is what you need to do. You need to log on before the first game of the week and you need to see who's playing. Yeah. You haven't yeah. done that, have you? I didn't do it for this round. Oh, mate. And so, what, where, what, what are you coming? Are you coming 138th? Yep. I just, I just, I just disappointed. But you just need to show a bit of care. Top 200. Okay. Um, Charlie, welcome. Howdy. Are you better than Dan? 
I am. Uh, Good. I, I'm glad to in, say, yeah. In fantasy, yeah. In, Good. In fantasy, yeah. Sure. Life. We'll no, you're, right, you're moving right up there. I mean, you're a Docker supporter, mate. So you must <laughs> I'm be. pretty happy oh, right don't now. Don't get me started. Oh, that was a good day yesterday. Oh, you enjoy that? <laughs> yeah, I did very much. We haven't won against Essendon. Oh, 14 out of the last 15 times, Essendon's won. Matty Tabena. Matty Tabena. First seven-legged crab identified, you know. <laughs> he's, um, I mean, he's doing big things here. What are you coming in fantasy? Uh, I'm 116th, okay. the same as last week, Good. so we got some steadiness. Cat, you you going okay over there? Back cat? <laughs> yeah, I'm catching up, I wouldn't say. Are you catching up? Are you catching up? I'd like to think I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will overtake you all, I promise you that. Uh, okay, good, okay. Um, well, you're currently 100, 158th out of 160, so good <laughs> luck from that. You are up one though, 159 yeah. to 158. Well done. Uh, I'm my position, I believe I'm 86th. I'm going backwards. Not impressive, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, see, I do sit here and give you a bit of flack about it, but I, it's not like I'm speaking from great heights, is it? No, you're not. You're with us. I, I mean, I think the frustrating thing for fantasy for me is, and this is why it's so beautiful as well, I mm. dedicate my entire life to it, basically. Yeah. Every minute I watch games, I'm just watching for fantasy. Yep. I write articles. I speak on a podcast. I do media on radio. I chat on TV. I work for Fox Footy. Yep. All for fantasy. Yep. And my team's shit. Yeah, you came. So you came to my house the other day. Uh, I just yeah. I you, ca- you walked in. You sat on my couch. It was like talking to a brick wall because well, you had to fix your team. Well, yeah, forty five minutes. That's what that's what's required <laughs> to not have non playing players on your team. Yeah, and it's still shit, which yeah. is just I, I've got to say it's a really it's a really big sore point for me at the moment, and mm. it, and it hovers in my mind. But we move forward. Yes, we do because there is a representative somehow connected to this podcast. Yep, that continues. Her march up the ladder. That's right. The hot guys team. <laughs> the hot guys team. Uh, Will's wishes. My wife. Mm-hmm. She's still going up. She's 12th in the league. 12th. That's crazy. We're, 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 she's, we're, excuse me. <coughs> she's she's competing against some high class players. Some high class leaguers in ours. And some some veterans of the sport. She's 12th in, uh, in our league. She's 568th in the country. And there's what eighty? How many thousands? She, she was of outside people? the thousand. Mate, there's hundred thousand. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, okay. I'm. I'm ranked eighty four. I think there might be one hundred fifty thousand. You know, last week uh, they send you the email every week. Yes. Of, of your ranking, I improved my the national ranking by forty four thousand four hundred and forty four in one week. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people playing, Dan, and Alex is inside the top thousand. Like it's, <laughs> it's a big deal, man. Yeah. And again, she's picked Bailey Smith as her captain. Why? Because he's it's the hottest hot. guy on my team. Yeah. He's hot. So, I don't know. It, it just points out to me where I've gone wrong. Yeah. Don't have hot guys. It's going to be my number one thing for next season when I play. Shout out to Nathan from Fri- uh, Primetime Ballers. He's 39th in the country and leads our league. Gosh, 39th. But the, the thing about this fantasy thing is don't lose hope. Like you heard Cat. Cat hasn't lost hope because you know what? Nathan could have a COVID bout, couldn't he? Not him personally. No, we don't wish that on anybody. Nope. But I'm talking about the players in his team. He could lose players like that. You hear that click? Yeah, but my... Yeah, okay. We're selling hope here. Okay, yeah, you're sorry, sorry, sorry. You're sorry. negative... Yes. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've, negative Nancy. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 you know what? Nah, I'm nah. going to finish in the top 100. From now on, this is, this is the last show. I'm not asking about your team until you have all playing players. Okay. Okay. I guarantee you by the end of the season, I'll be in top 100. Whippersnapper, whip around. Thanks to Whippersnapper. That's right. Um, World Whiskey Award, the best ever single grain, single cast in the world. <laughs> yeah, best In the ever. world. Well, best ever. <laughs> it's never been a better one. Yeah, correct. Yeah. It's like social media. They're very similar, actually. Um, we have a bit of a whip around the world of sport, usually a bit of footy. Now, we're chatting to Rugby Union uh, Western Force Vice Captain mm. Kyle Godwin later on in this episode. The God. Yeah, the God Godwin. Now, he, he'll give us a bit of a... 101 on what rugby union yep. is. You, I mean, you don't know the difference between rugby union and rugby league. Uh, a bit no. of time to study up before no, we have. That's right. We'll get him. Prime time, Wallaby represent, represent yeah, yeah, on our list. But we'll stay in footy for now. Mason Cox. I mm, love it. I mean, we mentioned his glasses and his socks and his get up a little bit on this podcast. Yep. Do we like it or we did not like it? I love it so much because. Because he hasn't performed great. Well, no, yeah. I love that there's just some quirks that make him stand out. Right. Like, if you're going to stand out, make oh, it worth well, it. Well, I'll tell you right now, he's going to be dropped this week. Okay. Because yeah. he was absolutely god awful. You could, and, and it's been it's been suggested that potentially uh, it was his 
glass, his sunglasses that he's wearing. His glass game. And people in the media sort of identified that as well. Jason Dunn still being one of them. He's a bit of a media watch, a bit of yeah. side swiping here by me. Uh, he, he put out saying, you know, doesn't quite, can't quite see out of the glasses, don't know what's going on. I saw a ball, it hit him square in the face. Well, it went through his hands and hit him in the face. Collingwood social media weren't happy with it. I saw on social media Collingwood directly calling out Jason Duntill, asking him to be better because this has directly affected Mason Cox's life and his mm-hmm. well being. Yeah. Fair or not fair? Fair. Okay. I you're, like it. You're a big supporter of Mason Cox's glasses. Yeah. Also, like, you know, if the guy's. You don't need a rag on someone. No, nah, I mean, you know, like, yeah. He's done nothing to you, Jason. No, nah, they'll look good in the VFL this week anyway. Gil McLaughlin. Yeah. The big fella's retired. He's hung up. You ever up spoken the to Gil? Per, like, per, like, yeah. I guess there's no other way to speak to him, <laughs> so, personally. Um, he used to. Uh, Andrew Demetrio did it before him, and before COVID, the CEO would come once a year to the club and hold a full club, like, basically update on the season and the league and QA. Right, and every and it was it basically the first twenty minutes, thirty minutes was a uh, this is what how mm-hmm. good we are and all the money we're putting into your club and everyone else's yep. club. We made all this money, and then they open it to questions, and to people like no holds barred. Yeah, like they, yeah, it's open slather, and so you know the property steward could ask a you know yeah. question or a player or a finance member or a membership or or the coach or yeah, and and it, yeah, like they always used to get pretty feisty. Both Demetrio and Gil McLaughlin were like borderline politicians. Like yeah. just knew knew how to answer the question without answering yeah. it. Yeah, um, that's their job. Yeah, so I, well, I think I, I asked a question in one of those. Mm. Don't think it got answered very well. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, no, he's had a fair legacy, fair time in the game. The co- the comments I've seen around it, and you know, this is reading from you know Nuffy pages and stuff like that. Well, thank God he's gone. Finally, someone maybe could step in and have some direction towards footy in WA. There's this big thing around Gil not supporting WA footy and it being too Victorian centric, which is just well. I mean, I mean, in the time he's been leading the game, there's been a premiership in Western Australia, and so like you can't win the premiership every year. Although no, we'd love our teams to do that. It doesn't happen. No. Um. So I mean, you got to take your wins. Some with, teams yeah. have never won a premiership. Yeah, that's correct. Who? GWS. Gold Coast. You know, yeah, all the expansion sort of... Oh, Fremantle. Ah, yeah. that's yeah. right. Sorry, that's I was forgetting just, that. Thanks, thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, but enjoy your win how, against Essendon in round five. 2022, his final year. Free flag mantle. Go, go, go. I mean, you can't you can't coin something that I've sort of been rolling out, Charlie, but to give us a bit of... Give us <laughs> how, how Freo fans feel, mate. I mean, Fremantle Dockers, this is a big news story this week. It's you, you, You're up and going. But, I, I mean, you have, heard it, you have heard it first here on this podcast. Yeah. It's not like we've been ragging them. Oh, yeah, you know. Tell uh, me how you feel, I'm Fremantle feel, fan. Feeling bloody great. Number really? two on the ladder. When was the last time that happened? I don't know. I don't 2015? Know. Yeah, probably <laughs> when we were minors, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah no, it's going to be a good year. You... Concerned about the next few weeks coming up. Top of the table clash next week. Carlton at home. Yeah, uh, Carlton is a worry. And then Geelong you know. in Geelong. The next two weeks, Charlie. Yeah. That's the, that's um, the next two you weeks. You know, I'm, I'm staying positive. We're going to beat them both. Okay, good. Yeah. Are you happy with the development of the team with no Fife in it? Are you sort of just feeling like that's your ace in your, in your pocket and you're just going to pull that out when ready? No, nah, honestly, at this point point like it's feeling leave him like, out no it's feeling like the team's working together you know with the input of sarong this week that worked great you know uh it doesn't you forget about him do you the game. do you think yeah. there's a, a some sort of sense of just waiting for you to fall over because it's happened yeah okay. no like as a freo fan you've got to be prepared for that contingency so at yeah. what point do you move past that when you've won the flag when we've won a flag yep. yeah okay yep. very good oh i'm happy for you mate yeah. It's good to hear I'm really you. happy that you beat Essendon in round five oh, and fans yeah. are celebrating like typical it's Typical West Coast fans. Typical West Coast. Speaking of typical <laughs> fans, I'm going to read you out a tweet because <laughs> I've been talking about this every week, how Frio fans can't just enjoy a win. This is a tweet I saw. Someone tagged me in it. Right. It, it was said, a tweet to you. No, it wasn't to me. It was just someone put it out and a, and a person yeah. who likes back chat tagged me in it just to say, yep. Bit of a celebrity now, aren't you, Dan? Um, this is some from someone that said, would love to hear from the Eagles fans who've bagged on Taberner in the past. He's been a fantastic key forward for a while now. So straight oh. after a Fremantle win, that person's gone, I'm going to just say something about Eagle, the Eagles. Like, just enjoy your win. Stop thinking about West Coast. I've been listening Rent to you free this, in your head. I've been listening to you this week about this. You have this thing that Freo fans just want to whinge about, you know, yeah. even though they win. A win. fantastic win. <laughs> 
And then first thing you do is I got to talk about West Coast. But I mean, it's just ironic that the the biggest West Coast fan is like the West Coast thing is to whinge about everyone else. Like, oh, buddy, Frio, just be happy that you won. Just leave us alone. Like, like we've done enough. No, but it's happened for years. This is West Coast. It's happened happened for for years, years. and I'm sick of it. Nah, but you know, we win, we win premierships. So, like, you don't have to worry about the other teams. Anyway, talking about Gill's legacy, I mean, Mm. he's done a lot of things. AFLW. He was a part of the team that brought Gold Coast and GWS into the league. So he wasn't CEO then, but he was the team that actually put it all Mm. in place. He was general manager before CEO. But one thing he has brought in place is um, Stephen Hawking. He brought him into kind of the rules of the game committee and trying to get the game get the game moving again. Right? Was that was it America? No. Keep America moving. No. Anyway. Sorry. I thought it was like Trump's. Make like America like, great yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Make the AFL great again. Right? Um, Gil tried to do that with Steve Hawking by more scoring, free-flowing footy. Yeah. Um, more contests, but you know, six 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 was one thing that I think has been a success. The yeah. stand on the mark rule. There's been a lot of rule changes underneath Gill's leadership, right? One that's coming this year that needs to be spoken about because it's mm. going to be the biggest issue of the week, in my opinion. Yep, is the umpire respect fifty meter penalties? That's you know, yes. started, well, the, the rules come in and umpires can now pay free kicks when they feel disrespected. That's that's how I'm reading yeah. it. Would yeah, that that's be right. It? Of that, course, because not every umpire pays it every time. Clearly, the well, uh, yeah, and so it's, it, I guess an argument against that would be that's the same as holding the ball, right? It's it's um, up for discretion. Like yes. if they, th- the umpires are going to do what they think. But the difference with this rule is the players don't know uh, what's right and what's they wrong. They don't know the line, and neither do the umpires. There, there's <laughs> no clarity whatsoever. So it's it's incredibly dangerous. Like there was, I think there was four. I watched every game, every minute of every game this week. Uh, I think there was at least four, maybe five free kicks from umpire disrespect or dissent that directly resulted in a goal. Like, you know, push that up to eight or nine and you're averaging a goal a game. And Mm -hmm. when games are getting decided by under that, it's something that needs to be figured out very, very quickly. Like, I, I... I, I'm glad I don't play anymore, to be yes. honest. Well, I've asked you about this in the past, about player relationships with umpires, and that certain umpires, you feel like you've got more rapport with them, and you can say, mate, what? explain this, and they might give you a bit more leeway. So with those player relationships with the umpires, they might go, you threw your hands up, but I know, you're, I know you, you mean well and you're not a, a dick. I'm not going to give the penalty this time. But for someone that you're like, mate, he's barking at me every game, I'm going to pull the trigger. That's where I feel like they've got the ability to decide. The when thing when is, they- right, it's an emotional game. Yeah. Like it is actually based on emotion. That, and that's what fans want to see. They don't want to see no emotion or mm. just robots running around out there. I because, fully understand yeah. why the rule's been important. You know, they, they, want to, they want to promote umpiring at junior levels and, and not have them being disrespected or abused or scared to umpire in the game. And that's great. But at the top level, just like the nominate ruck rule, yeah. it, it's ridiculous. Put your Everyone's hands up, please. Every, that was Oscar. It was seriously, it's, 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 they're grown men. You've got to be able to have conversations. Now, there's going to be a point if, if a player's pointing and yeah. um, being like a borderline abusive, that, that 50 meter penalty. Yeah. But putting your arms out like this and asking why, that, that, that got paid three times over the weekend for direct goals. For, um, for players putting their arms out. And the umpires were saying, uh, that's why the 50 has been paid. You put your arms out. Yep. Like I saw one today, Tom Mitchell, standing in the middle of the ground. Thank God Hawthorne won. He's standing in the middle of the ground. He looked up at the big screen. It was a terrible fucking decision. And he clearly said the same thing to the umpire. Put his arms out, 50 meter penalty. They're putting themselves in a position where they can't be questioned, which is dangerous because like, you got to be able to have conversations, don't you? Yep. And oh, just, I, I, cha- I, I challenged every free kick that was ever given against me. Every one of them. Yeah. And I would, have, had to, I would have... Yeah, correct. <laughs> Can I throw a suggestion at you? But if that's why umpires aren't umpiring, because they're getting challenged. Like, I mean, fucking hard enough. Like, the, the, the players... The players cop scrutiny every week. Mm-hmm. You, you're free to say what you want to the players, aren't you? Yep. Um, you, like, what's the difference? Why are they protected? What did you get called by umpires? Will? I had a few. I had a few come back at me. Sometimes you almost respect it more, especially if you go at them and they're like, "No, please don't." Like, oh, yeah, I'm not. That's I'm, enough, Scoey. Did they give you some yeah, of those? Yeah, sorry, nickname Scoey. Yeah, yeah, Will. Yeah, Will. Can I throw a suggestion at you for this to solve this? Yes. Tech foul. They're doing the basketball. Right. Look at the guy. You even one tech, mate. That's a that's a basically a warning. Warning. A it gives them a free. It gives them a free probation, kick. Probation. It gives them a free kick. Whatever. Tech foul. Free kick. Move on. No fifty. Second one, you're out. Of the game. Yeah. You're on the bench. Put the red vest on. Oh. 
And then you, you find you find players. You can't give 50 metre penalties because they literally most of the time they're giving them goals. Few, first, uh, disrespect or dissent, free kick. Yep. On the spot. Yep. Do it again, 50 metre penalty. Yeah. Do it a third time, you're off for the game. Yep. I, I can't, we can't go from never having this rule in place <laughs> to players asking, what was that free kick for? And off for the rest of the game. Sending them. <laughs> yeah. I reckon, I reckon th- if you do three in a, in a, in a game... It's not yep. not smart, is it? And you but should be you should be allowed to make a mistake without it impacting your team like that. Yeah, for one, so freaky. Just one and a fifty meter penalty. You do it you twice, and you're like, "Come on, mate!" Like I literally yep. just hold fifty, and then three, you're off. Yeah. Oh, jeez! Like imagine grand final. Uh, his <laughs> Nick Nananui. Oh no, sorry, Sean Darcy. Oh boy, <laughs> Tabena, Tabena, the third one off in the third quarter. Oh boy, you'd be happy, wouldn't you, Charlie? But yeah, you wouldn't do it, right? It. If you're like, mate, I've done it twice now. Has, I a, has anyone ever been sent off with a tech foul? In, well, it happens in basketball all the time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you say you wouldn't do it. Well, they do it all the time in basketball. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they do it deliberately. Send like, a message. No, no, no. That, that's incorrect. Like you saying you wouldn't do it. Someone would fucking do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it, it, Not everyone's it's, a rule player like you, <laughs> mate. Like someone would break the rules and yeah, end up probably. getting done three times. I like it. Yeah, it's a probably. good suggestion. All right. all right, let's move on. Back chat bets brought to you by Blue Bet. <laughs> Oh boy. We'd have a serious discussion here. Okay. Now, although this isn't about making money, it's and we've said that every time and it's mm-hmm. not. No, it's not. We had the opportunity to make a lot of money on the weekend. <laughs> our multi was $19. Now, if you want to follow along with these, we put our multi bet for the weekend right before the first game starts, basically. So it'll be on yeah. a Thursday or the Friday, depending. Yep. Um, we've started building it later in the week because we're having to make too many changes. Yeah, team announcements COVID. happening late and things like that. Anyway... Last week's bet was nineteen dollar multi. Mm-hmm. So even if you had ten bucks on it, hundred and ninety bucks. Thanks for coming. Yep, we hit three and four. Mm. Charlie's bet, um, Freddie two goals, two goals on the Freddie oh, Express, and he, and he kicked one, one kind of late as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's probably umpire descent, but he kicked them. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it was a holding. Yeah, the, it was a fair holding them. the ball call with, with was, in yeah. about thirty yards. <sighs> so Michael Frederick, right? yeah. loved yep. it. Yeah, two goals, Charlie tick. Uh, Dan wanted to pick West Coast. Just put that out there. No, I didn't want to pick West Coast. I want to put him at the I line. Will, I, I want li- to put him at the line. I will literally show you the message. The line was four points. The line was four points. You wanted to pick just West thought, Coast to win. I just thought maybe. Right, okay. So I changed your mind there and said Sydney will win. Yeah. Well, I did that easily. Will tick. Yep. Um, Port Adelaide to mm. beat Carlton at yep. the line. You know what? So originally I thought... I think Port Adelaide are finally going to get the dub. Yeah. Like, this will be the one, and it'll be against Carlton. Then, like, then they got a big line bet, so we thought we'll put yeah, that you in. you know what? With that close, we'll go the line so of So we did that a bit, as a big, bit of a group. So then Dan wanted to go out on the ledge by himself and say, mm-hmm. well, will you explain what you did and why, why you've cost so anyone to go on our multi I picked total game? even points for the Sydney West, uh, Sydney West Coast game, which means mean? the final score... Two teams combined, if it equals an even number, it's a, that's a win on oh, that. So it can be either be odd or even. Yeah. For the 50-50. Yep, that's right. Genuine it's a, it's flip a of the coin. Genuine flip of the coin. There's, there's no likelihood that either would be more than the other. No, not at all. I mean, maybe no. Sw- Sir Swamp thing, there may be in history more games have been uh, okay. odd than but even, uh, but, but generally $1.89 or whatever. It's potluck. Like potluck. So I thought, let's go it. Let's, do, let's make something exciting that will go down to the very last second of the game that you're following along. Eagles were Eagles Sydney. It was an even score for the last ten minutes or so. Yes, maybe maybe seven. Yes, with four seconds left, oh no. West Coast kicked a point. Oh no, to make it odd. And we're not going to say who that player was. No, no, I'm not, not about that. that. It doesn't matter who did it or, or or that it happened. It's just unfortunate that we were so close to the multi coming through. I'll we'll, take responsibility we'll, for it. Absolutely, but you will. Yeah. I love the bet. I love the the odd even because it's very exciting. I'll However, give you, I'll give you one more chance. Well, I'm happy to roll with it next week. Yes. But it's got to be late. It's got to be the last bet of the multi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't have it ruining our multi two legs in mm-hmm. because someone I agree. gets a point with a second to go. Yeah, I agree. But I can have it <laughs> I can have it winning us a multi as the last bet in the after we've done three yeah. with someone kicking a point with three seconds to go. Yes, that's the thing. It's a, it's a toss of coin. And who knows what we would have picked instead of that. All right, that is uh, Back Chat Bets, powered by Blue Bet this year. Um, just for a bit of fun, you want to jump on there? Um, follow us on socials, backchat double underscore. You can find it all on Instagram, on Twitter, you can find it. Um, yep. Sign up, make an account, 
throw your email over our way and yep. I'll be on a yeah, just just look out around Thursday, Friday evening. Yep. We'll put up a story with a link directly to the multi. All right, very good. Now, last week we introduced a fine segment. Don't have this one sponsored yet, but if anyone's listening that owns a massive corporation and you want to put some money behind it, go for, for your life. Fines brought to you by Backchat. That's yeah. right. Off our own this back. segment needs a name still. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm the fines master. Yep. Um, we can find internally and externally. Am I the fines apprentice? Well, no, you're just a you're just a you're just a person. You're just down. <laughs> just a pleb. Um, kind of like turn it up a little bit, but turn it up from uh, turn it up. What's the what's the what's the show called? No clue. Yeah, Danny Frawley no. used to be on it. Uh, Jason Dunstall. Uh, after the, footy, right, after right. the bounce. Yep. Talking footy. Uh, not that. Uh, not anyway, <laughs> so it's like turn it up. It's like you can't do that. Can yeah, you? yeah, like yeah. You're yeah, saying yeah. this sort of shit. Yep. Anyway. Go to the website, backchatpodcast.com.au. There's a form. Submit your fine. Mm-hmm. If we've said something wrong on the podcast and you want to call us out on it, if we've... If your neighbours wronged you. I mean, like, a fine this week would have been like Dan for picking out, you know, evens and odds and ruining the multi. That's mm-hmm. a fine. Two dollars. Yep. Put it in the thing. All right, put it in the jar. Um, if we tell you Frio's going to win and they lose, well, that's a, that's a fine to Charlie. <laughs> Because yep. he's forced us to say that, obviously. Let's say you see uh, your cousin at the shopping centre and they don't put their shopping cart back. Right into the website, we'll find them. See someone head down to McDonald's and order five filter fishes. <laughs> Send it in. That's a fine. That's a, that's a big fine. Yep. Unless it's Dan. <laughs> Has anyone hit you up for a free filter of fish yet? Um, you know what? Yes. So, oh boy, <laughs> someone someone came up to me and said, Jeez, you're hey, a celebrity, mate. I tried your filet of fish. Oh, Where? No, I don't want to say that. Where? I tried to fill the fish, didn't enjoy it. and But they didn't, I like left it. I didn't say anything. I was waiting for them to go, so I want you to pay me my money. And they just sort of said like, oh, so yeah, I didn't like it. But I didn't, you know, they didn't ask for the money, so I wasn't going to push right, for it. Front up, go. I reckon. <laughs> okay, fine to that person for not asking for Dan for the money. $2 <laughs> to you, big fella, whoever that was. Right, so we've had some fines written in. Yeah, okay. There's no internal one. Any internal ones? I don't have any internal ones this week, unfortunately. I'm going to get through these. Lisa Ray XOX. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, this isn't a read for you, Dan. I'm going to show you how to read things out of... I'm just going to show you how to read. Go read. All right. Fines, fines, fines to you, SCOE. Because banana fritters are the thing, particularly after a long night on the fruit tingles with the girls. Hashtag truth. Fruit tangles. Um, fruit tingles. Remember fruit tingles? What's a fruit tangle? I believe it's probably some sort of cocktail. Oh, boy. Okay, so um, Lisa wants to find me because... Where, when did you talk about banana fritters? Was that, was this that, one confused me. Was that like six months ago? I don't know, but I appreciate You're it. F- no, didn't you Didn't you order the banana fritters from some Absolutely kebab place? Absolutely I would never order them. Because they're fritter. disgusting. Okay, talked about that's a fine discussion. Some, like nearly a year ago. Okay, $2 to me. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate you digging up the archives. This is from Rick <laughs> Peterson. Uh, who gets the fine? <laughs> this is a bit brutal, to be honest. <laughs> Dan's grandparents, yeah, okay. father's side. Yeah. Rest in peace? Yes. Okay. This is brutal, Rick, but I'm going to read it anyway. I haven't read it before, but it's brutal that two you're finding. This is a multi-generational fine because of two people meeting, falling in love, getting married and having children. <laughs> One of these children went on to meet and fall in love with a lovely lady and then procreated to produce a son called Dan. And for this, a hefty fine should be imposed. Boy, well, Just for me existing. Rick. You know what, Rick? I appreciate it. $2 fine to Dan. Rick, you can have $2 back because it's a bit aggressive, my friend. Come yeah. on now. Like, if it had been Dan for, I don't know, liking Phil out of Fishes, $2 fine. Yeah. Just for me existing was harsh, Rick. Pete. It's, it's quite harsh. Rick, William Rick Warren. Pete. Did you like my read there, mate? Not one error. Just so uh, you know, so we know. Who gets the fine? Everyone. Everyone from Will. <laughs> okay. okay. Everybody, $2. Fair enough. Put them in the jar, our listeners. Explain why a fine is in order. Massive fine for Will. Okay. Well, there you go. That's fine to me. Yeah, fine for him for not knowing how to use the form. Massive fine for Will for saying Marara Oval is in Alice Springs. The Alice Springs ground, TIO, Traeger Park, is only 1,500 kilometres away from Marara Oval, TIO Stadium. And another fine for everyone else for not correcting him. There that you go. intentionally confusing. Okay. They're, they're both called TIO. Fun right. fact, I was working at the game in Alice Springs, which was massive for a long-life Eagles fan. And yes, the change rooms are shocking. Mm. Very good. Gave a bit of insight into that last week. Tom Carmody writes in for the fine. Who gets the fine? Dan. I absolutely love this email. Like, I love <laughs> this. Two dollar five for you, Dan. Dan, stating last week on the podcast that you don't see Ruckman coaching in the AFL at all. 
Justin Longmuir, oh, debatable, and Ben Rutten are two straight off the bat. Sorry, <laughs> Tommy, 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 Tommy. Justin Longmuir was a forward who played yeah, in the ruck every now and then. Ben Rutten was a full back, mate. <laughs> Come on now, Tommy. Ben Rutten played full back for Adelaide. Now, if you want to find me again, you think I'm wrong. Dean Cox, he's a, he's a coach in the AFL. Well, Damian my, Monkhurst is a coach at Hawthorne. My point was that you don't see it often. Like I said, you don't get to um, <laughs> argue with <laughs> yes, that. Okay. So two are fine. But I will say, Tommy, your two examples that you're saying straight off the bat. Yeah, big for, I'm, you know, I'm writing to the website. Tom's getting big fines, like $20 fine. Philip fines. White. Hello, Will, Dan, and the man who can make any girl faint by winking at them. Charlie. Okay, I think yeah, this is this is bridging sad. into uh, you send it, we read it territory, but that's cool. I'd like to issue out some fines to okay. my wife for getting the giggles every time she hears Hugh Dixon name called out. Find two dollars for immaturity. Yep. Yeah, huge. Uh, my, myself for leaving my wallet in my ute, so some drop kick smashes my window to steal it. Five dollar fine for being a moron. Fair enough. My son for getting his first falcon and Oz kick. Fine one dollars <laughs> for making me get him Maccas after to cheer him up. I bloody hope it wasn't a fillet of fish. Dan, two dollars for you, mate. By now he's stuffed up reading this email at least twice. Well, you saved me from a fine because I didn't read it. Yeah. Um, there you go. Fines for the week. Mm. Very good. I think I copped it worse. I'm feeling fine. You send it. <laughs> we read it. Here we go. Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. You want us to read something, you send it there and we'll read it. We Philip will. White. This is the continuation of his fine email. Okay. Um, so this is also, can you give it a, an opinion on pickleball, lazy man tennis or extreme Table tennis. Let's go with that first. Have you seen pickleball? No, I've seen none of those. Okay, he sent a video as well. It's basically think of uh, a giant table tennis table. You're standing on it, except it's not a table; it's a court, and you're using big paddles and you're hitting oh, a ball. I've it's seen like this. I've yeah. seen some footage. I up. actually like it, and it looks fun. Well, because it, it doesn't look hard. That's why. <laughs> no, it looks <laughs> no, yeah. no. Because it's like tennis, except you get a like a big dead bat that like the balls don't come off at all. They're only like a small court. Just because it's not hard doesn't mean it can't be fun. No, no, correct. Yeah, yeah, great. Looks yeah. fun. Yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, also, would Cat and Charlie play a game of pickleball? Winning a uh, winner gets a bottle of whippersnapper. I was going to suggest Dan and Will play, but with Will's calves unable to withstand stairs, he best maybe umpire it. Fair. Very true. You two up for the trait down there? Interesting idea, yeah. A uh, bit of competition. I wouldn't mind it. Cat, you in for it or what? I mean, you're one from one in competition standards at the moment. I need another reason to beat him. Okay, yeah. perfect, great. Pickleball, Charlie v Dan, um, Charlie v Cat. That'll be good. Um, we'll have a look at those videos too. Dale Garalalalalalavik. Yeah, Brownlow Medal. Listening to a previous podcast, I wonder the following: Premierships are built on defense, and what if umpires gave three two one for backmen, three two one for midfielders, and three two one for forwards for each game? And it would make it would make the night a lot more interesting. And I almost guarantee a backman would win. So at the end of every game. Three, two, one for forwards, three, two, ones for centres. I mean, and say, it it saying up. that guaranteeing a backman would win, I mean, like, it would, it would, it means a backman's going to get three every week. Yeah, but so is a midfielder. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. the Brownlow vote would effectively still be the same, but you'd have like a forward and a defender. But up they there have to them. include the, the, you know, so yeah, Tommy Brass on the weekend, probably the best Eagles player. The midfielder's not going to get that. So it, it, would, it would just, yeah, 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 but no, but yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, but for the for the game, Tom Brass wouldn't have got def- he no. wouldn't have got votes for that game. No, he wouldn't have. So, although I like it, it just adds more numbers to the pool. We're we're already unsure about the umpires' decision making throughout the game. To then add on, also, you need to tell us your best backman and your best Is forward. It clear on top that, of that I didn't love being umpired, just in general. You would have been an awful to umpire, I reckon. Yeah, no doubt. Just get it all like because I expect like people do things right. Like I. I yeah. I'm like this with the podcast, I'm like this in life. It's like, get it right. So if you're an umpire, like if it was a right decision, it's hard to argue with, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, but it means that, in the same notion, you've got to get it right on the footy field. And you often you do. Exactly so that's right. Why what do you, you think I'll run around going, yeah, cheers guys, that was awesome, I fucked up. Like when I got it wrong, like yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got 90,000 fans going at me, mate. Like it's not like I just get to make mistakes and it's all good. Same yeah, as yeah. the umpires. What do you so think why, about- why can't I no, but well, like why can't I speak to them how I want to speak to them? Like if I do it respectfully, yeah, okay. I'll like okay. where does where does the line where does the line get called? Like I've got another um, suggestion get for the you. Call right there to fix the game. Yes. Can I share this with you? Yes. 
Next to the coach, each coach has a big red button. If they don't like a call, they go bang. You're going to get one a game. Challenge. And the whole stadium lights up red. It's a challenge. Yeah, but I'm making it more theatrical. It's a challenge. And Okay. And so a 50-meter penalty is given, bang. I don't like that. They review it. There's a third umpire who goes, no, nah, actually, I don't like that. So let's free the game up, <laughs> high scoring, um, and free flowing, it. and then let's get a red warning light <laughs> system installed in every league in the country. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Gazza Gazman for the last one of you, Senate. We read it. Okay, hi, guys. Love the show. A question for Scoey. I've always been interested in knowing what the post-match recovery is like after an AFL game. After your post-match coaches meeting, what would a normal afternoon slash night look like for a player? Uh, you often see players eating pizzas, etc., after a game to replenish calories, etc. What sorts of foods would you eat? Um, and was it a bit of a free pass to eat whatever you liked? What was your go-to? There's a bit there, so let's pause there. Okay. Uh, it's a good question. So um, pretty much straight after a game, like I always found it difficult to eat, and I, that was pretty common across... Yep. Yeah, I didn't eat much before the game and then after I wasn't that hungry either. So the reason for like you see pizzas or um, kind of more, I guess, junky food is like because it's still carbs and it's still protein or whatever you want to need to get into you, it's still something and it's just easier to eat than like a salad sandwich. Like you're not going to sit down <laughs> and have a nice carrot Curried and tomato. And, yeah, cool. Oh, <laughs> I, I bet you love them. No, I've you never don't. had one. It okay. makes me... Th- oh, like, yeah, exactly right. Great yeah. example. So, like, pretty much the dietician was like, look, you need to get something in. If you can't eat, you need to find ways to get stuff in. So that was the night if you were going to eat takeaway food, Hungry Jacks, being the sponsor or Macca's, <laughs> that would be the night. Yep. And pretty much most games I would drive straight to... It just depends where I was close to, but either Macca's or Hungry Jacks. Yep. And, like, my go-to wasn't Phil and Fishers, no. Yep, Okay. But um, for the sake of sponsorship, it was always Hungry Jacks. No, not really. No, I, I don't play for them anymore. No, yeah, true. I used to eat McDonald's all the time. <laughs> McDonald's, Hungry Jacks, whatever it was. Um, yeah, and so like you do the post-match meeting. There was never any beers in the rooms. Like you, that, you get that in amateur football. Like that doesn't exist at yep. AFL level. Um, ice baths. Uh, a night game always be very difficult to sleep and get to sleep. So mm. guys, yeah, like because you've got so much adrenaline pumping through you and – excitement or disappointment or lots of emotion anyway used to find myself sort of up and a lot of guys are the same 12 1 2 3 o'clock in the morning because you, you wouldn't get home till you know if you start at seven twenty, you don't get home till yeah that's the anyway. next question so what time are you leaving the ground yeah so like a night game uh, i guess yeah let's work off a seven twenty. it's two and a half hour game effectively with breaks yep. um if you finish at 10 it's probably a, it's pretty it's a pretty quick turnaround it's a meeting Go and do recovery for 20, 25 minutes, shower, dressed, out of the room. So you're getting home at 11, 11.30. And then, yeah, you got to kind of calm yourself down but effectively. So some guys use sleeping tablets. So it never really worked that well for me, but like some guys need sleeping tablets to get to sleep. It used to be junk food, maybe a couple of beers, like literally just by yourself just to mm. just calm down or I don't know, something, something that would just like soothe your mind. It, it was less about physical, like – you're always a bit sore, especially if you got injured or a knock or something like that. But it, most of the time it was mental and in your mind that you were sort of amped up. Um, he asked, could you sleep? That's been covered. Um, day after game recovery. Oh, uh, sort of like changed through my career. At stages, it was like compulsory at the footy club, 8 a.m. After, know. so you get home 10, yeah. sleep 11, yeah, 12, so, 1. Yeah, like under stricter regimes, it was like, Club, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., like recovery, get it done, and then you can do whatever you want for the day. Right. Whereas later in the career, like sleep became a real focus point on recovery. And so they would say either don't even come in, just make sure when you wake up you get down to a beach or come come in at midday. They would set the recovery session at midday for like ice bins, stretching. Um, it was pretty always pretty relaxed. Walk a few laps. Day straight after a game, nothing, like realistically. Yep, um, and uh, a lot of questions. Always been interested in the day to day. Hopefully, we answer them all. Yep. Yeah, P.S. Filet of fish is an embarrassment of a burger. <laughs> Should be banned from menus everywhere. Cheers, Gary. Oh, you know what? Cheers, Gary. That's a great way to finish. You send it, we read it. P.S. Filet of fish is an embarrassment of a burger. Should be banned from menus everywhere. I agree. Mm. All right. Well, we've got Kyle Goblin coming up. He's a good man. Uh, we'll do that. And you know what, Ben. We'll get to your email next week, mate. We're missing you again. 
All right, we are joined in studio very happily by... Uh, we're not just a footy podcast here, Dan. Mm-mm. And I, I think we've identified that with Andrew Bogut, with Peter Bowl, with Tommy Morris. Josh Garlop, for some reason, was here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who are... The Sir Swamp Thing? Yep. Greg Hire. Yep. Greg, Greg Hire. Yep. Well, we just, we've just moved on over to Rugby Union now. Kyle Godwin joins us in studio, Vice Captain of the Western Force. Just played his 100th Super Rugby game last weekend. Uh, rookie of the year back in the day. He's played for the Wallabies. Not sure we're getting a bigger name here in Perth mm. in the studio. And he joins us now. G'day, Huge. mate. Thank you very much, boys. You're too kind. Uh, how, kind. how are you? Are you, are you, are you uh, this, this, this surrounding... Mate, you know, I love pretty, the shrine. I love the shrine. Yeah. We really <laughs> need, some, we need some force Bit of contrast. Yeah, there's far more Eagles going on here, but I like it. You yes. know, Obviously, Willie's the Eagles man himself. So. Yes, great. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So the first question we ask all of our guests, <laughs> right? I was going to give you some questions. I was going. I was. I was going to give you some warning because I just. I just. Uh, you know. Uh, he's no not, look, he's bigger than both of us yeah, combined. So he's. He doesn't uh, need us. We know you. We know you're a big, big rugby union lad. We know you're a big strapping man. You know what you've done on the field. You played over a hundred uh, Super Rugby games now. You've played for your country. We're here to tell you we don't care what you've done on the rugby field. Perfect. That is. We want to know. <laughs> yeah. We want to know what is your greatest sporting achievement. Not on the rugby field. You need to give us your not best sporting moment. I mean, I feel like we need to give him some examples. Okay. Yeah. So why don't we Andrew, start with you? Okay. Well, I've got numerous, numerous. Just um, give us the one that under, you... Under nine, 80 metre hurdles, state champion. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's um, pretty. Uh, Tom Hawkins plays AFL. He was a uh, year 12 high jump champion. Hayden Ballantyne plays for Fremantle, was a javelin thrower. I mean, they're all athletics. Yeah. Andrew Bogut... Beat Phil Helmuth in a game of poker before, mm-hmm. so you can go and you can take it wherever you if you like to go. We can go even as far as yeah. Callum Sinclair last week told us he was the lead at his like year twelve play, like he got yeah. picked as the lead. So, and what's yours? I mean, I mean, yeah, I've many things um, played so many sports, excelled at all of them, but uh, I I got five wickets for sixteen runs um, in a in a final in cricket. Yeah, that's when huge. I was in the grand was, final. Right? That's actually the the ball right there, oh, yeah, there the trophy. Go, so I mean, you know, happy. Uh, didn't that, that, that's, that's hard to beat, to be honest. Yeah. What do you uh, got? Look, to be honest, uh, I've been scrolling through my brain. Obviously, <laughs> rugby player concussions, you know, all that kind of stuff. So for me, it's a bit harder, but. I do remember when I was about 11 or 12 and I was going through a skateboarding phase. Oh, wow. yeah. So I think my friend and I, Luke, Luke Ranzik, a mate of mine, he, he was big into skateboarding, right? Um, and I was the tag along. I mean, I never got past the, the ollie, you know. I was kick flip may, maybe once yep. or twice out of flute. And we entered into uh, a, like a local skate park competition. Mm. Um and long story short, I think I came third out of four people. So that was the biggest achievement hey, of my life. Really? You know, I did come last. Top three. So there we go. Yeah, that was <laughs> top, top three. Yeah. That is big. I, I made podium. <laughs> I made podium. So yeah. it was, a Mal- it was a Mal- the Melville Skate Park. I do remember it. And I think, you know, what, what do you do when you drop in and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got through that, did a little spin or whatever and landed in a kickflip or something. Who, who was a sk- who's been on here that was... Ska- who, uh, Sherrod Wellingham. Is he a sh- Sherrod is he a Wellingham. He bought some skate stuff. So, uh, I mean, you, think you, were, you were talking with him as if you knew what he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I used to like do stairs and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Five O grinds and stuff like that. Trinity boy? So he was skateboarding after school. In yeah, the correct. Park, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So you know your, uh, you know your private schools here in Perth. I've got to just ask quickly. Well, yeah. You were top three and you never really skated before. What was the fourth guy doing? <laughs> Mate, he was participation as well. Him and I were a close third or fourth, you know. So oh, that is yeah. good. So, yeah. okay. So, Sharon Wellingham's at Trinity, correct? Yeah. You're an Aquinas boy. Aquinas boy, Aquinas right. boy, Right. Yeah. So, I mean, what's that? Uh, I guess before we get there, you, you were born in Zimbabwe. Yeah, born in Zim. Um, yeah. You came over here as an eight-year-old. Yeah. Move yeah, over here yeah. in 2000. Yes, yeah, correct. So, what's that adaption like for a... I mean, a kid, are you eight years old? Like, what's that yeah. like? Yeah, it was, it was a big shock, right? So when we first moved, we obviously moved in 2000 when things were a bit tough in Zimbabwe. Um, I don't know if you know then. So that was like, there was a lot of land acquisition from, you know, the government and everything taking back land. So the old boy thought it was a good time to move across. Um, it's funny, when we moved across, I think the exchange rate to the US dollar was about like 50 to one, right? <laughs> And within two years of us moving, it shot to about a billion to one. So literally money became worthless overnight like that. So it was pretty oh. wise of my old boy to get out. But wow. yeah, look, to be honest, the first memory I have is we, uh, we signed up at a lo- little lo- local school in the hills called Marymount. And um, like, so in Zim, it's pretty strict, right? When you walk past a lady or a teacher or so, good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. And 
I walked into the classroom and there were kids just running berserk. Like, so like, I was like, what the hell have I got myself into? You know, so, <laughs> kids were doing everything they wanted, you know, back chatting the teachers. I was like in for a bit of a rude shock, but you know, I absolutely, I'm fully blown Australian now. And ever since then I've been back checking te- teachers as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, um, I, are we, are we good? We're good. Yeah. We'll just double check. Yeah. All good guys. Okay. Yeah. Good. What about, uh, okay. So you move over here. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, big footy, big, big cricket. There's not a huge rugby union family or, I guess, process here. How, how, how did you yeah. find – you clearly played that growing up. How did yeah. you do the sort of – Yeah, well, to be honest, I, I had a very strict Zimbabwean father and rugby was the only way. It was his way or the highway yes. and I played rugby and that was about it. So, yeah, for me, like, a lot of my mates played all like, AFL and all that kind of stuff, but I never really got to it. Um yeah, I was just rugby through and through. You know, I signed up the local clubs and played for Aquinas as well. And it was only rugby, to be honest. And Obviously, it, I played other sports in summer and everything. But is that like? I mean, like I've been from a footy background for my whole life. You've heard Danny's cricket yeah. and and footy, yeah. um, a bit of basketball, Soccer, basketball, basketball. Yeah. But, but like, what's the yeah? <laughs> what's the like? Uh, what's the scene here in Perth? Like in, in private school, what's the competition like? Do all all schools play rugby? Yeah, union well, yeah. Well, like, there's you're there's, gonna have to give us a full education. Oh, here perfect, on rugby perfect, union. perfect. So we'll yeah. do that. So so um, it's funny you say that, right? So Perth, out of all the states, or Western Australia, is the third biggest rugby state in Australia. Oh. So it's hard to believe, you know, a lot Queensland, of people. Queensland, New South Wales. Yeah, and then we're the third biggest state in terms of participation. So, um, yeah, like either you play it through your private school, like Aquinas or whatever, or you go and join a club. Um, the standard at school is probably nowhere near it was what you'd get on like your first 15 East, East Coast teams. Yeah. So, so what you get, yeah, you know, you get a lot of your Wesley boys, your the Trini preppy boys, ones. or playing AFL one day, you get a lot of those on the, the private schools over East. And it's rugby unions, unfortunately, going that way, of, it's still notoriously a bit of a private boys school kind of game. Whereas you get your leagues there, not as, you know. Well, it's funny you say that because... Dan was saying before you came in, it's like union and league. I mean, like, what's the difference? And I know that's going to hurt you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But tell us and listeners, union and league. Like, what yeah. are the big differences? Yeah. Um, you're a union boy, so yeah. you're going to say league's a piece of shit. That's no, the first no, no, difference. No, no, no. no. Well, look, it's funny you say that. A lot of the boys love watching league. Right. You know, it's probably a far easier game. The union's so complicated. Even when we play the game, we're, we're having a penalty against us. We're still like, what the hell's going on there? Really? Yeah. That's like, but like, just like the AFL. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But the big difference really is I think the media managers in league teams have a far a far harder day than the media managers in the in the union teams. I think Why? Because of the players or because of the attitude? Uh, I think the players. You know, I think the union boys are a bit more straighty 180 than the league boys. But um, I know they're good fun, you know. Um, yeah, no, the difference in terms of rugby, it's like we've got 15 on a the side. They've got 13. They have sets, so they have five opportunities to play, and then they have to kick the ball around. You're unlimited. Yeah, we're unlimited, and mm. we we push in a scrum and lift and line outs, and so the purest absolutely they have, of union. They have scrums in league, don't they? Yeah, they have. They, they have attempt, <laughs> they, attempt they, of scrums. Yeah, they exactly. Sound like yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> Could yeah. is it easy to players like interchange between the two? Is that an easy move? Um, and do do players do that? A lot of players do. Um, I mean. Some of the most successful union players have also jumped across from league. You look at Sonny Bill Williams, he was like, he's the big dog of both both um, codes, you know, to be honest. Like some 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 players struggle, um, but some players really thrive and succeed in both, on both sides of the field, you know. Is it more like yeah. position based? Like are there certain players like, you know, wings and stuff like that that you can, your game yeah, can translate? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you find a lot of the, the league boys that do transition though, you find them in the back row or out the back with the backs or the pretty boys, but yeah, they're usually your tough runners or the speed on the wing, as you say. That's what I was going to ask next was yeah. positionally, right? So in the AFL, um, the midfield, so basically my saying goes, and a saying goes, but I'm claiming it as mine, the yeah. forwards, uh, they they sign memberships, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, people come to watch them kick goals. Yeah, uh, your buddy mid- Franklin's thousand yeah. goals kind of thing. The midfield, they sign sponsorships. Right, so they got the big money, they got the big deals, they got, but then the backs they win the premierships. Yeah. Like the back line is the is the guys that hold the team together. They save the day. They yeah. actually are a team within a team. All the pretty boys are up the field. <laughs> what's that like in rugby union? Yeah. Like, what's the setup? It's Who's the same, the, but the role reversal, right? Okay, so the forwards are your grunt work. They're your engine room. They're the like the, they're yeah. just the guys that yeah. are hitting up. Yeah, they're hitting up. They're not doing like, any of the pretty work. Yes. Their work is all dirty. They're getting cauliflower ears. They're getting cut up in their face. <laughs> you know, surprising. I'm a back right. I'm meant to look pretty, but I've got a couple of cauliflower ears myself. But right. 
the back line are meant to be your notorious pretty boys. And as you get further and further out the back line, they get prettier and prettier and, you know, softer and softer. From the middle of the field? So you got like the big guys right in the middle and yeah. then as you get wider and you're wider. Wider. You're meant to get quicker, quicker and more flashy with your boots. So you can wear pink <laughs> boots on the wing. <laughs> <laughs> Has any, any centers or forwards been rolling around in pink boots? Yeah, well, I'm a center. So, but I wouldn't go pink boots. I'm a white boot kind of guy. That's me through and through. I've always been a white boot guy. <laughs> who's, so it's wearing, like, who's wearing the black boots? The black boots. The, they're your grumpy boys in the forwards and your old boys like richie kahui he's mate he's he's an absolute weapon absolute machine uh, ex all black um he's still 36 and he's still like destroying everyone in the field and he still wears the old adidas 1980 <laughs> yes predators or whatever they were and they're black and he know? literally bought them in 1980 yeah as well. he, ha- he hasn't changed them since <laughs> <laughs> oh that's unreal okay yeah. what about um, if we're talking about Union v, I mean that's a bit Union v League, but like Union v the AFL, like what's the what's the highest paid player in the in in uh, what's the league? What's the league called now? Super it's rugby, super rugby. Super rugby. Yeah. What's the highest paid player in the whole league getting paid right now? Well, in Australia, probably like our captain Michael Hooper. Yeah, the Australian captain. Here we so go, a bit of insight. Yeah, yeah, he would be. Oh look, I think anything north right, of a ballpark, million. right? Yeah, I, would, I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, um, I'd say definitely north of a million. Yeah. Um, but yeah, f- for us, we're, we're lucky in terms of our uh, rugby's a global game. So you find a lot of boys who go over there who haven't played a lot of super rugby experience. So you can go to Japan and you can get paid a, a bucket load or France and get paid a bucket load as it's well. It's not like yeah. cricket where they play in like seven different leagues in a year though, right? Like you're no, playing no, 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 like no. one league a yeah, year. Yeah, you play one league or you play for your country. So it's, yes. you have your domestic season, which is with your club. And then after that, you move into playing. If you're lucky enough to be selected, to play for your and country. national national selection and national squad are on a different wage to say club footy. Uh, like, yeah, you, like, all, all the boys would if they're in the Wallabies would get paid by their club okay. throughout the year. But if they're lucky enough, some of them would get a top up from the Australian Rugby Union. Right. Yeah. I'm just sort of trying to gauge yeah. like you know you know league size. So for instance, yeah. the AFL, there'd be probably ah uh, there might be close to 10 guys on a mill a year yeah. probably less so yeah, no, 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 no more than 10 there would be like five five maybe yeah. and then you've probably got a band of you know a, another 20 to 30 guys between 700 and a mil yeah and then you got your good players you know if you're a good um kind of every week player you're never going to be a superstar though you're probably on like 500 he's like a, like a good mainstay yeah. player and then down from there to like rookies you know, first into the game are probably on like sixty to eighty thousand on match payments, yeah. um, and then everywhere in between from that. Like, is that a similar profile? Uh, yeah, but why? Like, in terms of numbers, way off. Like, for instance, we would have only maybe one or two guys on a million bucks over in Australia. I, again, I'm just guessing. I no, yeah, really I, know, some, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of them would sit around. Like, if you're playing your regular Wallabies, maybe around five hundred, six hundred k. Yeah. Um, and then it just falls even more further if you, you know. Yeah. If you're, I, I'm guessing, I'd say maybe two hundred thousand. If you're a standard wall, um, standard super rugby player every every week. Yeah. So okay, yeah. so back on your sort of journey, like your pathway is Zimbabwe. You get here as an eight year old. You go through the system. You play for Aquinas. Yeah. You are captain of the Aussie schoolboys. Captain, I wasn't the captain, unfortunately. Yeah, but but you, uh, but you played in what? Like I played in um, yeah, a couple of schoolboys. Yeah, we, we we were lucky. So every four years they do a, a United Spring Tour. It's called the Spring Tour every every four years, and um, luckily on my year we got I got selected to go on that one. We went I was seventeen at the time, and I was using one of the boys from Melbourne's fake ID for about four weeks, living the <laughs> life like it was the best <laughs> time I've ever had or field ever. And I want to go back to those clubs. I can't remember where they were, and talk to all sorts of people that I ho- ha- hung out with. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't yeah. want to say hook up yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah no, that yeah, was. One of the best experiences of my one life. One of them wasn't Revolver, was it? Revolver, I've heard of that. No, but no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, yeah. correct. Uh, okay, so like that's the pathway, right? You play schoolboy yeah. rugby, um, you get some rep sides, and then you move your way into Western Force. Right? Yes, yeah. So when did you debut for Western Force? Uh, I was 19, and yeah, yeah. So I debuted for the Western Force was 2012, yeah. And 2012. Yeah, yeah. And so that year, you win Rookie of the Year? Uh, under the following year, what oh, got yeah. rookie of the year? Yeah. yeah, so how does that work? Are you sort of like a like I know in basketball they have like a development player, so you're on the list, but you're not technically a rookie. Yeah, so for my first two years out of school, I was on effectively like a development contract. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, and what's the squad like for like the Western Force? Is you know there's 13 guys on the field. Yeah, 15. For 15 us, on yeah, the field. Yeah. 
Um, is there a 30-man squad? Yeah, we usually have about a 30-man squad and then you have five rookies as well on All top right. of that, yeah. So about 35 players. And then obviously you got your academy and then your academy boys will fill in and out depending on injuries or if they're going well anyway, they might be brought up into the squad kind of thing. Whereas it's big, it's way bigger in AFL, isn't it? It's like 50 or 60 on the list, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah. there's there's 45 on the 45. list. But they're like trying to pull that back now, but then COVID's kind of thrown a whole bunch of stuff oh, apart. Yeah, exactly. Because, uh, you know, like for instance, West Coast, um, they had five guys playing from like the state league in the in the real stuff like three weeks ago because COVID kind of decimated yeah, them exactly, over here yeah. in Perth yeah one of the bo- old Aquinas boy Angus Litherland he, yeah he got on so yeah he got all Aquinas Angus he's a Aquinas boy in my year as well yeah so yeah. He, he played for Hawthorne Angus Litherland yeah he did yeah and then, came, and then came back here he's been playing for Subi yeah and then he looked at home playing for West Coast a few weeks ago yeah that's good I, I t- again like excuse my ignorance and in, in terms well, of AFL, but I didn't watch the game but I heard we so, will yeah. match your ignorance yeah. with yeah. our own ignorance perfect oh, lovely so how does that work like you're in Perth like it's a footy town like you can yeah. say that Union's the biggest you know third biggest in, in Australia but yeah. you, you're not a footy fan at all you, you said you said before you've yeah. been to oh no I love seen, the game I appreciate the game you, know, I think you don't have to be yeah no no but like <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't say I would go to an Eagles game every week. Have you been to one? I haven't, actually. Never uh, been to an Eagles I, game? I lie. I've, I've, no, I actually haven't. I've been to one Frio game in about year four. Really? Yeah, I got invited to a year four birthday party, and that's where I went. <laughs> that's a sick birthday party. Yeah. Go yeah. to a game. We went to Frio, yeah. So, yeah, so you just you never played it, like, I'm just like yeah. I'm just looking at the physique. I just think he'd be a good, be a good <laughs> AFL what player. What oh, position would you chuck him in? I mean, like, how tall are you? One ninety. One one eighty eight. Yeah. So like. He, oh, you'd be fucking damaging some fucking players if you played him in a forward pocket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like back, back pocket. Back, back pocket. pocket. Back pocket. Yeah. Perfect. Sounds good. With the um, with the squad you're saying, there's about 30 guys. So I understand in in Union, there's like set um, positions. So in AFL, obviously, you've got like six backmen, you've got yeah. six guys in the middle. So there's much less, obviously. Is that super competitive for that spot because there's such fewer opportunities to play? Or can, or can your position, like, are you pretty, like, are there certain guys that could play 1 through 15? Uh, or not yeah. through 15. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, don't, I know exactly what you mean. So, yeah, some guys are very position specific. Like, for instance, I would never be able to play in the front row. I'm not 140 kgs and I'm not strong enough to be pushing with that pressure kind of thing. So that's su- that's suited to uh, those kind of players. And then no, your second rows are your big, tall locks, so they jump in the lineup. So I would never play that as well. So... And you need a bit of grunt as well. It's something that us backs lack, you know. <laughs> but in terms of backs, you can get guys that kind of can play multi multi positions. So your centers can maybe get on the wing, and your wingers can come to the centers. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, like for instance, and in your number nine and ten is very sp- position specific. You know, they're your generals. They're you guys who kind of dictate the game, kick the ball in positions, and so that that they, they need a pretty specific skill set to play that. S- someone like myself thinks I'm. A bloody tan as well, so sometimes I like to fill myself in, but I learn out pretty quickly that I, I'm not designed to be a number ten. It, it, it looks like a sport that is physically tolling on the body. Like I asked, how you pulled up from the weekend? Like when I watch Union, I just think these guys just must. You must spend five days in an ice bin to get up the next <laughs> week. Like, does your body cut become conditioned? Yeah, definitely, to, definitely. To the hits, yeah. like yeah, big time. Not bigger big hits time. than any other sport, yeah. really. Uh yeah. To be honest. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you get you get conditioned to it. To be honest, um, your first couple of g- games at the start of the year, or your first preseason matches, the next few days, you're pretty sore. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, your body your body conditions to it. You know, it's it's a beautiful thing. It's like the Air Force boys. You know, they just get used to running big loads of 15 k's a week or whatever the midfielders are doing. Yeah. Does that does that scare you going out and running 15, 16 k's? To be honest, like the the max a uh, union boy would maybe get is y- y- your backs or your wingers, and they would get up to maybe eight k's a game. Whereas, so you guys are running over double. So like I look at Union, I'm like, I would not last two, two, <laughs> two, what are they called? Like two, 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 two I wouldn't last two, two hit ups. Yeah. No, two hit ups. Like I'm on the first receiver, I'm running into another bloke. Yeah. If I don't get snapped in half on the first hit up, <laughs> the second one, I'm getting snapped in half. Yeah. You're pulling a hammy. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like shoulder. Yeah. Like not quite feeling <laughs> do, it today. Do, do you know, the thing that we don't get in rugby as much, but you guys get, is you guys get, can, you, everyone can get bumped or hit from any angle. If you know in AFL, yeah, so that you can get some big hits in your guys' game as well. Yeah, you know so, what I mean. So, so it's not a three hundred and sixty game. Exactly. Rugby, yeah. Right? So you got to have that kind of peripheral. I'm sure everyone adapts to it and has a skill set for it. But 
you can get hit from any angle, which is like I'd say you can get you get some nasty knocks in AFL. Well, I was going to say is concussion yeah. a big deal in the in union? Because yes. it's really just starting to become a really big deal in the AFL, especially because yeah. some recent cases. Yeah, of guys yeah, Brad games. and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's big. Yeah, and I think they manage it really well in union. Um, I think it's something that was probably looked on as a bit light on, and it's like, oh, mate, toughen up, get on with it. But I, I think they're making some good steps, and I, I, I kind of tend to agree with the protocols and situations that they put in place for it. You know, you mentioned cauliflower ears yes. before. Are you strapped up? Do you, do you nah, strap I'm up? not doing the honey badger. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't have the curls and I'm not strapping up. Because that's what that's for, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Strapping the head is to make yeah, sure the ears don't get exactly, ripped off. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's what the boys are doing for that. But um, it's funny, this story. So I had this cauliflower and it was like literally, I was like 2014, 2015. And I, it literally, every time I'd hit it, it would just keep swelling up and I'd get it drained. I had it drained about... I'd say on 15 times by the dock and it was just getting annoying. And then after one game, I was lucky. I was just sitting there on the sideline and this half drunk plastic surgeon rocks up to me and he's like, mate, your ear looks shocking. I'll sort it out in the back sheds. So <laughs> <laughs> literally he grabbed me, tapped me on the shoulder. The force doctor is like, mate, he's a good boy. He'll, he'll get it sorted for you. Grab me, cut some holes in my ear, stitch me up, bit of local and my ears. This, this is looking pretty. This is looking real pretty. You should have seen it before this, but I, I was like, "Is this guy carrying a fucking scalpel to the game or something?" Yeah, like, he's really tapping you on the yeah. shoulder, like, and some local, scalpel, yeah. and some. Local oh, yeah, while he's localing, he's, he's on, he's on the forex as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that that bit's made up. <laughs> yeah. oh. is, it, is it painful? Uh, m- most most painful thing, underrated pain. I honestly reckon this is a sorus injury, but I mean, oh. I, I could be. What does it feel like? What does it feel like? It's just, yeah, it's just painful. Uh, hard to hard, yeah. full yeah like yeah yeah it's just pressure ears. yeah pressure and sore yeah i think i can relay i remember having a, a oh, piercing up the top and i yeah. got infected once that was, that was pretty <laughs> painful <laughs> you had a what a piercing yeah, up the top but you can still see of the um you can you still did, see bro. the speaking what of did you um, have like a nice swoosh <laughs> <laughs> no it was a diamante um, <laughs> <laughs> um do you do you remember when you first got into um, so when you first started playing the force your first time playing professional? Do you is there big hits that you remember that was like a welcome to the league sort of? Times yeah, the, the, yeah, there was a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, a couple of times I got bumped by. There was this one good player from the Crusaders. You know, obviously, again, you guys probably wouldn't know, but Crusaders is notorious. Yeah, I know league. the Crusaders. The Where do they best what country they're from? New Zealand. No, yeah. no, I, hope so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say. I was going to say <laughs> that would have been an interesting yeah, yeah. answer to be honest. I would like <laughs> to have seen that. Um, like, are they, they, are they the guys kind of with the, with the culture? Like, well, they're, yeah, they're, 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 they're the most successful Super Rugby side in, yes. in the history of the competition. Um, and Big Robbie Fruin, who is a massive centre, uh, went to go in and tackle him, and it was a real welcome to welcome to professional league, mate. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> this is what you got to do. You got to be dealing with every week. But um, no, when I first signed up. I'm sure it was the same with you, Willie. Is either they kind of step up in intensity and pace, and it's just a bit quicker, a bit more intense, and yeah, yeah. But I definitely had a few w- welcome hits. Do, do they? Me. Do they? Um, you know, so if someone does something silly in the AFL Monday, there's the normal review, but then there's a few clips that get shown. Like, look at this here. So, like, uh, yeah, say you get run over, is that a? Oh yeah, definitely, that? definitely, definitely. Yeah, we had one game last year where we all we needed to do was kick the ball out to win it. And oh no. Oh no. <laughs> one of the boys went to go and kick. So we'd just been defending for about five minutes against the Rebels and Jack McGregor went to go and kick the ball out, miss hit it. It just bounced out and they got the ball back and went on to like try they didn't, and... They didn't score. No, but we literally played it about 20 times in the replay. As soon as he kicked it, his face was like this and like, <laughs> literally <laughs> wide as it goes. So I've never seen a man so wide in all my life because he knew it. <laughs> Royally stuffed the game up, but lucky we went on to win it anyway. But that was played a number of times in the, in the review. I've got to ask about the kicking because um, every time I get a, f- a football in my hands, I just want to kick it. Like so, and I understand in, in like there's just something ingrained in people. I reckon you want to kick the ball. I understand in in union, not everyone's allowed to kick the ball or not meant to. Yeah. Do guys get itchy feet? Are there like? Oh yeah, we, we we have a few like I say forwards who think they can yes. kick or two. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. They're only reserved to kick after training. That's it. That's their only <laughs> time to. I shine. love that the backs and the forwards are opposite in the AFL. Like <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna keep like when I hear forward, I'm yeah, thinking yeah. of like. Yeah. You know, like Tom Brass, like you're not allowed to kick out, man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no kicking out. You, yeah, you yeah. see the ball, you just put it down. But yeah, it's yeah. like the forwards, like do not kick the ball, boys. Like, <laughs> yeah, you just yeah, get yeah. out of the exactly, way. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. you you kick the ball, right? You're yeah. A, well, I, I attempt to kick the ball. That's yeah. the thing. I should have gone and played AFL when I was growing up, and I might be a bit of a better kick, to be honest. But um, <laughs> yeah, like my my position 
allows me to kick from time to time. But yeah, like I said, you're nine and you're ten, you're big kickers. Yeah. It sounds like Kyle's a bit of a jack of all trades. Like yeah. I think the boys, be, the, boys the boys, the boys will be like, is the underlying yeah, you can there. kick it, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. but like maybe exactly, just get the yeah, actual exactly. kickers to yeah, do yeah, it, mate. Yeah, like, exactly, yeah. Okay, if you have to, like, yeah. please go yeah. for it. Yeah, I did watch uh, that's a, me. Yeah. I watched the highlight earlier, and you kicked it. I'm not even going to attempt to say the guy's name, but you kicked it forward. It was like this perfect. It bounced perfectly. Picked it up. Scored a try. It was like um, some, uh, and I was like, oh, decent kick. Yeah. You know the one. You've watched the highlight. The fluke. That was a fluke, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one you're talking about, but it sounds like a fluke to me, to be honest. Can you can you give us a bit of a rundown on what's happened in in the actual leagues around Australia for 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 Union? Like for Union. Yeah, yeah, because like as far as my knowledge goes, which again might you're gonna mind my ignorance, yeah. but it felt like not too long ago Western Force were getting kicked out of or, or left out of yeah. a new alignment of teams. And then this new league kind of started up. Yeah. And there was like private ownership, and now it's kind of back to a. Has there been some toing and froing in, in Australian and New Zealand, like the world? Yeah. You know, yeah. So effectively, what happened? You know what I'm asking? Yeah, about no, that. I know exactly what you're asking. So in 2017, um, the Western Force got kicked out of Super Rugby, at, and at that time, Super Rugby was um, Australian teams, five Australian teams, five New Zealand teams, and five South African teams. Yeah. So Australia obviously felt like they didn't have the finance and also the quality of player to. Find the depth. Yeah, the depth of uh, like talent to fill five teams. So yeah. they, they got rid of the force, which was angered a lot of people in yeah. the Perth rugby community and right, rightfully so, to be honest. Because there's a lot of fans here, right? Yeah, yeah. We 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 have the Sea of Blue, mate. Most loyal fans, I can assure you that. Blue. Yeah, there we go. Love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then they got kicked out and effectively Twiggy came in and a lot of like other West Australian families came into, you know, Johnny Edwards as well. I had another mention for him here. What flat families like that came in and tried to prop up and save the force and thankfully Twiggy was able to buy it and effectively he wanted to create his own competition and he did that and he got that and that was going to go underway in 2020 and then obviously huh. the world got hit with the pandemic called COVID and um, yeah and, and so that league flopped if, not flopped but like it didn't, it, it, didn't it, go it, ahead it didn't go ahead and that year uh, Australia couldn't play New Zealand, couldn't play South Africa. So they got, uh, Western Force got reintroduced into the Super Rugby Australia. So we started again playing back in with huh. it. So COVID actually reignited Western exactly. Force. Exactly. Oh, holy shit. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and now we've been back in. So we, South Africa's moved across. They're playing up in Europe now. So they're playing in a European competition because of the time zone and everything that. Uh, but we've got a Super Rugby now is between Australia and New Zealand. And how many teams are there now? Ten. Uh, no, 12. 12. We've got so two new Pacific, um, Island. Yeah, Pacific Island yeah. team and then the Fijian team. Huh. Yeah. So what what happened to the boys that were on the list at 2017? They got a call, sorry, we're going to have to find somewhere else to go. Yeah, well, that's the thing. So like for some boys, luckily, like, say they were halfway through their contract, their contracts were going to be what's upheld or... Yeah. You know, so they, they were sweet and they got, most of them were moved to other super rugby sides on the East Coast. Um, but yeah, and for some boys, it was like, you know, the beginning of the end of their careers or oh. some of them stayed and then they f eventually played for the Western Force side that Twiggy created. Um, yeah, it, it was a pretty sad time. I had a lot of mates and I, I moved to the Brumbies before this all happened, but a lot of real close friends that I grew up playing with. Um, yeah, no, it was a tough time for them. So we're jumping all over the place, but like back sort of on your things, so you move from Zimbabwe, you play for Aquinas, you yeah. move into the kind of uh, junior ranks of rugby. Yeah. You play under 20 Australian footy, like yeah, yeah, representative yeah, footy, correct, yeah. the junior Australian side. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, what's that What's that lo process like? Are they, are they picking the best under 20s across the country? Yeah, so effectively, yeah. They, you, you, you go to a few camps at the old AIS in Canberra. I don't know if you guys have ever been there. Yeah, yeah I've been um, there once. Invited a few times. Though, <laughs> <I went. laughs> the old one, it was like yeah. dorm. Like, um, it's dorm living. I mean, the food's good. Yeah. The food's good, but, like but the, it's freezing. Yeah, and the accommodation <laughs> yeah. is like, I don't know, yeah, like yeah. this is a nice bed. This yeah, is yeah, a exactly, real yeah, nice yeah. bed. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so you spend a couple of camps there. Uh, and then you get selected and we played in South Africa and unfortunately my year and I was probably one to blame as well for that was the worst Australian rugby s did in the comp in the World Rugby World Cup wow. so yeah that's my so kind of fame yeah exactly and I'll put my hand up for that one so so you play for Western Force it's at that time as well yeah. yeah it's all good yeah playing for Western Force at that time uh yeah pick for the Wallabies your debut for the Wallabies yeah no no so like yeah. 2016 yeah 2016 yeah so I got 
I was in and out of the squad uh, for a couple of years, and I was a hit shield holder, effectively. I don't know what you guys would call it in the AFL, where you, you kind of we call, we call it bin juice as well sometimes. Tell uh, me exactly what, know what both that of those <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah. mean. Okay, so bin juice is big in rugby union, right? So bin juice effectively means you're a squad player, but you know when you have like the bin, you have the rubbish, right? But then you have the bin juice yeah, at the bottom. Yeah. The dregs. Like the dregs. Like yeah. you, you're the dregs. So I was the dregs. <laughs> <you know>? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, if you're going to be the dregs, at least you're the dregs of the Australian team. Yeah, yeah. so I, I was the bin juice holder or the hit shield holder, which which was great when you go on tour to Europe, for, you know, and you're not playing, you get Friday night double D nights, which is always good fun. What is double D nights, man? Double D, you, you're dirty, dirty. So you're, the, you're not playing squad. So every Friday night, you make sure that you go out and have a good time with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I love and you that. make sure you front up for Saturday training before the test match that your your, your kosher has yes. pretty loose nights. Yeah, um, so so if you go out right, this is the thing yeah. in the AFL as well. Um, don't call it double D's, but like uh, pretty much we're not going out um, before games or anything. But like you are in the squad, so you're kind of not either. Yeah. But if you go out, you can't you can't not miss you can't miss the next day of training. No, no, no. Like no, if no, you no. rock up, yeah. Like if you go out, yeah. you got to rock yeah. up. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't exactly. matter what state you're in. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. no calling up. Oh, I feel sick. No, no. Or no, you, uh, you can't get away with that. You you rock up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad that is cross code. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, you you front up. You, Double dirt. Yes. Yeah. Wow. No, we had some good ones. Like in France, we went to the old Can Can. What's the uh, Moulin Rouge. Rouge? Yeah. So that was one of the nights. <laughs> the girls booked a table. Everything that was a good night. That one. Um, bunch yeah. of a bunch of rugby union lads all yeah, sitting yeah. in Moulin Rouge. You yeah, ever been exactly. there? No. Nah. Would you dress up or were you just in? Uh, well, I mean, like I was 22 at the time. I thought my fashion was pretty cool. It was pretty <laughs> atrocious. But it still is. You know, I'm wearing short shorts and pointy it, shoes. Yeah, exactly. Double polo, yeah, I'm thinking. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. double polo. <laughs> Toss <Tossel> art. <laughs> <laughs> thinking I'm killing it. You know, it's great. So, yeah. okay, so you spent time with it in the squad, right? Yeah. So yeah. And then, yeah, in my, I was bin juice. Yeah, bit, I was bin juice big time. Um, Sounds like a beautiful place to be, yeah. to be really honest. <laughs> go to France, <laughs> go out. Um, and then, yeah, in my second spring tour, I was uh, lucky enough to get a, a test match against the French um, at Stade Francais, which was like a screaming 85,000 stadium, which was a pretty cool experience. And, yeah, we got the win as well. So wow. I'm one from one in terms of win win ratio, you know, so I'm happy with that. No Godwin, no Wallabies. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the, them say that. Well, the, cricket, the cricket's got the baggy green. What, what do the Wallabies have? You, you, you get your test cap as well. They like yeah. could have a name for it. I wouldn't, it's not. Your I saw a picture. Green. I saw a picture of you like getting your hat, and yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. that looks like a baggy green. Yeah, it's, it's like pretty much a baggy green, but yeah, we, we can't take that away from the. Cricket, Is there anything kind of like I don't know um, number day, but like yeah, yeah number? Um, Is yeah, there yeah, anything I'll like nine oh three? You you yeah, need to yeah. pretty cool. Debutants? Do you have to carry a fucking red bag? Do you have to like? Is there hazing? Uh, another there, you got to wear your cap for until the, the Monday of meeting of that after that test match. So right. you you wear your test cap. Um, and then your youngest on tour, he has to look after Wally. Uh, I don't know if you guys have got, ever heard that in AFL. So Wally is like the little wallaby that we um, carry on with like us. Like a plush toy sort of thing. Exactly. Like yep. a little plump toy. And pretty much if he gets stolen, you mate, you got, you got hell to pay. You know, so... <laughs> That's boys great. spend their whole trip trying to steal them and you spend your whole trip trying to protect them from being stolen <laughs> so because there's, there's, there's harsh punishments and there's pictures coming up of him being like hung by the neck like <laughs> in rooms saying you need to find Wally mate so okay so you were in charge of Wally for a fair bit did you ever no I was it? never uh, was I no I was never Wally I was never Wally yeah I never, uh, never had to look after Wally yeah, was, does he come out like go out drinking and stuff as well uh, no he doesn't uh, I mean he can if he wants to right? if <laughs> he's a, a double risk. D yeah, yeah. It, you just can't lose him but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah he comes with you everywhere so he comes with you to meetings you, t you, you know he, uh, on the game he s sits at the side of the, f the field yeah, what punishment if the boys lose him do you remember punishments <sighs> can't really recall i mean like there's the, 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 there's hell to pay and it's public name and shame in the meeting you you, you, get, you get banished pretty hard but uh ah, it's just like punishment. For, for, yeah. from external like union looks like uh culturally there'd be a lot of that sort of stuff going on like fines yeah um, big time we had, we had actually had a social meeting today did you yeah yeah spin what? the wheel we have r roulette okay yeah talk to me so effectively we've got a we, we got a social committee and throughout every two weeks or so that they rack up the fines yep. and it's effectively a bit of fun. It's like saying like missing a smarter base, which is like your physio check-in in the morning or if you're late to a session or you miss a media day or something, um, you have to spin the wheel. And then on the wheel, the fines 
Can you give yeah. us some on the wheel? I, I might ask because so I was fines master at West yeah, Coast. And I, was, I had a, Tom, Tom Brass and I had a wheel. Yeah, you had a wheel. Had, oh, so had so a wheel. Had a, exactly I'm just same. wondering what was on the wheel. What's uh, on the wheel? It, it varies. So, for instance, like at the moment, we've got um, we had kitchen bitch. So we had one of the boys get kitchen bitch today. So they effectively have to clean the kitchen every day. <laughs> That's uh, crazy. That wasn't on one guy. Right. We had neggies. Neggies. I don't know if you guys have heard neggies. So the boys have to get their like sh- head shaven off. Yeah. About like halfway through down And like no sideburns Yeah 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 exactly. <laughs> oh, So like brutal. if you've got a big hair A flop of hair or whatever You've got these like crazy neggies <laughs> <laughs> So if we if, if we're watching a game And you see someone with a mop And shave sides Yeah he, you know, he, 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 he's been a bad boy <laughs> And he's great. got fined More more players uh, I'm just trying to think What else today We had um Oh you have to wear your suit as well So You have Wait. to wear your suit for a week <laughs> Um so one of the boys got that today. So every morning for every meeting, before every units meeting, whether you're back or your forward meeting, and every team meeting, you have to wear your suit throughout the whole meeting. <laughs> <take it off. laughs> That's so for good. For a week. And if you don't do it for the week, you're doing it again for another week. That's great. We had Love a couple that. of good ones I'm trying to think of while uh, while we're chatting. So one of them was, one of them that only happened one time, Josh Kennedy spun it. And it was um, in a team meeting. It doesn't seem like much, but like the reaction that what happened and we had to take it off the wheel was what made it was um, you had to call the coach, the head coach, by a nickname. And we, and, and, <laughs> oh, that sounds great. And we like, we gave the nickname. So what was it was, the nickname? It was, I'm just, oh. <laughs> Fuck. So Adam Simpson, right? Um, Josh Kennedy had to call him Adzi. <laughs> Adzi. <laughs> so, so. Um, we're just lost on the weekend. It's Monday oh review. No. He spins the wheel before the Monday. Because like after a loss, as you yeah, know. Yeah, you want to get the boys up. Spirits up, right? Exactly, yeah. You can't be moping around all no, week. Exactly. And you get the fines done early. And so yeah. you have a good laugh. Yeah. Then the many comes in. But you've got to switch on too. Yeah, you exactly. can't all be sitting there fucking giggling away. So everyone switch back on. But Canada's has spun the, the nickname. <laughs> and we've given him Adzi. No, one's called, no one calls Adam. That's not his nickname. Yeah. Right? yeah. What just is his nickname? Simo. Simo. Simo, yeah. Simo. Yeah. No Adzi, one's called him Adzi. No, his wife wouldn't call him Adzi. If I called you, go, oh, Wilsey, what's happening? Correct. Like, yeah, exactly. shut the fuck up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What's so, going on here? So towards the end of the meeting, everyone's sitting in there and there's 45 guys knowing it's coming <laughs> and it hasn't come yet. And it's getting real serious. Like Simo's starting to show some clips that are like... He's getting fired up. Yeah. You either do this or you're out of the team. Yeah, yeah. stuff. And it was like one of the last clips and Josh Kennedy puts his hand up, which no one does either. Like you don't put your fucking hand up. <laughs> yeah, you just Yeah, you just talk. talk right? yeah, you're not it's a school way. Go, man. It's like talk. Yeah. Josh Kennedy, vice captain of the team, like you, puts his hand up and Simo goes, uh, yes, Josh. <laughs> like, and and Kennedy goes, oh, uh, Adzi, I'm just wondering, um, just with the centre half forward there, like coming into that stoppage, like whether or not we need to do that. And Simo literally like, Dead silence. <laughs> Looking at him, staring like eyeballing him, like fuck, eyeballs pinging. Like, oh no, just call me Adzi. <laughs> <laughs> Whole place is pissing himself laughing, right? <laughs> pissing himself laughing. Simo, not a glimmer of a smirk, like genuinely disappointed, upset with Kenners, oh, no. and like just continued on with the meeting. <laughs> and then like everyone left, players are in there, everyone's walking out like, I can't fucking believe he did, he actually did it. Simo's like upset, Kenneth is in there having a meeting with him, apologising. Simo had to come in on the Tuesday and said, right, there's to be no more fine on the wheel that affects our team meetings after games. He was upset. Oh, really? Real he took upset. it that- yeah, yeah, real upset. Oh so I don't God. know if Adzi was like a name he was called in yeah, school. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of bullying yeah. from school. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that so was one funny one. Yeah, we had we shaved the head, we had... Uh, at one stage we had like a minute to win it kind of thing. So you had you one minute in front of the group yeah, yeah. and you had to entertain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we, boys we, did yeah. a rap or yeah. boys did a yeah, your own poem personal show, yeah. or like a yeah, song for yeah. a minute. Or Well, Greg Holmes, so he he's one of the old boys on the team. So he's obviously seen a few things. He's, he's far too old to be playing as well. And I tell him that every time. <laughs> How old is he? He's 38. He's actually, I give him, I like to be honest, he's a freak to be doing what he's doing. He's in the front row. He's the one getting dirty. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah, he's and hats off to me. I uh, absolutely love him. Um, go fishing with him a lot. I always have to tie his knots. You know, he's too blind and stuff like that. <laughs> so kind of thing. But um, no, he um, he used to play at Exeter, which is an English team. And the, the, he reckons the English banter, especially in that team, is just second to none. You know, they had a similar thing. And yeah, just some of the stories you don't. I don't even want to go there. But like, we we have some boys there who who, who were doing some really mentally good, scarred. Yeah, exactly. One on one like performances, which were unbelievable. <laughs> like dealing with nudity and all that kind of stuff. So, wow. yeah. what's it? What's it like playing for your country? Are we off, we're off track. I keep getting off track. 
Yeah. What's what's it like playing for, for Australia in front of eighty five thousand people? Oh man, is it it's a, awesome! Is it's it awesome. a dream? Yeah, awesome. it was a dream of mine as a kid. You know, I always wanted to play. Uh, originally, I wanted to play for Safka. Yeah, I've been you know, I was Springbox full, fully fled. Well done, sir. Well yeah. done. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> proud of yourself. <laughs> I put it there, Jim. Yeah. We'll just wind that up there. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to play for the Springboks growing up until about when they won the World Cup in 2007. I was like, all right, I've got to change the allegiance to Australia here now. So I've supported them up until their winning success. And ever since, I wanted to play for the Wallabies. And yeah, lucky enough, got got the opportunity to play for the Wallabies. Yeah. Are there sort of unspoken pathways to get to the Wallabies? Um so obviously it's hard because there's so many guys that obviously want a spot and there's very limited places. Um, so for example, I'm just thinking like with the NBL, right? So there was a guy who signed with the Brisbane Bullets. A lot of people thought he signed with Brisbane because the coach of that team was also the Australian coach. Yeah. And a lot of people said it wasn't the best move for him to go to Brisbane, but it puts him in the eyes of the Australian of the coach, coach. Yeah. because he wanted to play for Australia. Are there sort of things that you got to do in order to get on the Wallaby squad? Effectively... Long story short, for us is like you just got to play well for your club side, and if right. you play well and you can cons- you put in consistent performances, you're gonna get selected. Uh, but I mean, like like anything, there's always the beauty of rugby is it's so subjective, if you know what I mean. So everyone has their own opinion on players, and some coaches may like you, and some coaches may not like you. So it's about tr- hopefully the coach, the Wallaby coach at the time, rates you and thinks you're a good player, and you're you're gonna be in that squad, and you're gonna have a great Wallaby career. You know, right? You're, you're so 29, right? Yes, correct. So is What's what's prime time for Union? Is this now? Is it, are you in your primary career? I'd like, to, I'd like to think. I'd like to think. I'd like I'll ask some of the boys. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, done, he's, he's done, mate. Old, old school, you know. So do you, do you have do you have hopes to play for the Wallabies again? Uh, mate, that, uh, that's so. If I was playing in Europe, and the reason why I came back was to try to give Wallabies one more crack. Obviously, I, I got selected in the initial squad in twenty twenty, and then got got the chop pretty quickly after that. Um, I mean, that was that's the dream of mine to go back and play for the Wallabies, but I. Unfortunately, I don't think uh, maybe, maybe that ship sailed. But you know, I still try and you know, still a goal of mine. But yeah. uh, in terms of re- being a realistic point of view, yeah, I think that ship may have sailed for me. What are those camps like to try and? So do do they list like a big squad? Then yeah, you're you get you get selected for the squad, and then generally you're in that squad and you're training, and then f- within that you're competing with each other to play in the twenty match tra- match day twenty. Are they the pretty? Weekend. Pretty intense training. Yeah, they're, they're intense. Like, so playing for your club is a lot more relaxed and you feel it. But you go, when, of all, speaking of all my experiences, uh, and I was under Checker, who's he's a, he's a great coach, but the, co- the the camps were intense. You know, you always felt like you're on edge and you know, everything like that. But, uh, you know, it's a great experience. And right, rightfully so, you're trying to represent your country and do the best for your country. So I, I can understand the pressure there. So you're back with the force now. You started with the force, but in the middle, you went to the Brumbies. Yeah, the Brumbies, yeah. Over east in yeah. Canberra. Yeah, I spent two years in Canberra. What's that What's that like? What's Look, that sporting mate, scene like in Canberra? Oh, man, like, there's there's two sides to Canberra, right? So there's obviously the Brumbies, which is one of the best Australian sides yeah. going around, you know. It's so like from a George from a, Gregan type exactly. area. Exactly. George Gregan, yeah. Larkham. Yes. George Smith, you know, the, you like know, the, 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 team, the golden, right? the golden yeah. era of, of the Wallabies effectively came came out from that the, um, that club, and it, it, it notoriously has been the most successful Australian franchise. Um, so I spent two years there. I absolutely loved my time on the field there. It was great fun. I was coached by some great players. I got coached by Stephen Larkham as well. Oh, yeah. So that was great. Um, but yeah, moving over from the west where you, you spend your time in the water, you spend your time on the boat, you spend your time fishing at or diving OVH. or surf at the OVH as well, man. It's the old local, <laughs> yeah, the old stomping ground. <laughs> <laughs> Front bar, obviously, as well. Yeah, um, fuck around the back bar. Yeah, the back bar on a Sunday, maybe, if you're yeah. a bit naughty, but that's about it. <laughs> um, I like it. And Remind me, I've got a story about the OVH and yeah. rugby. Actually, yeah, I think I think I've, I, my soaks, my my club team here, my local club team, I think had a bit of a drink uh, off with you boys. We'll yes. get back to you. <laughs> come back, come back, come back. Yeah, we'll get back to that. I've heard stories about that. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, where was I? Um, Canberra. 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 Yeah, yeah, Canberra. And then, yeah, so moving across, I mean, yeah, in terms of, the, for me personally, I didn't really love my time off the field in Canberra. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a city full of politicians and limited amounts of things to do, but some people love it, you know. But for me personally, I, you know, I was blessed out west. Yeah, you know what it's like. Yeah, we have, we have pretty much the best lifestyle in the world, I reckon. You moved to, um, sorry, I just <coughs> move that again. Yeah, I'm just gonna tie. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna tighten it while, while you speak. The, yeah. So so okay. So you play in Canberra. I always wonder what it was like in Canberra sporting scene because like from afar, like I've been to Canberra. It's like 
it's nothing. There's, it's camp. It's in. The, it's not on the coast. Yeah, exactly. It's in the middle of Australia, yeah. not in the middle, obviously, but it's inland. Yeah, there's politicians. Super like, freezing. Super. I'm yeah, telling you. Super cold in the middle of winter. Yeah, so like you know, it's not, it's not what you thing. want yeah. coming from yeah. where you came from yeah, exactly. into Western Australia. Yeah. Into Ca- so, okay, why the fuck did you move to Ireland after? I mean, Ireland, yeah. So, I, you played in Ireland, right? I played in Ireland, which I was like, mate, I can't so imagine that's much warmer in Ireland. No, exactly. Well, the thing is, Canberra was way colder, but in Ireland, right? I was, in, I was staying, living out Western Ireland, Galway, you know, Ed Sheeran, Galway. Girl. Literally, in, if you go and watch that video clip, that's pretty much where I was living, you know, around that, that kind of area. So, um, I'm I, I'm if they got I got a good opportunity to go play overseas and you know I got paid pretty well there as well so that was also a draw card and at the time the Wallaby coach spoke to me and he wasn't seeing what he wanted from me so I thought it was a good opportunity for me to go away and um, you know work on my craft in a different year you know the rugby up north is pretty cool uh, and it's it's a really good standard at the moment so went on and worked my craft and got to play out west with Nagola, uh, west of Galway you know um, <laughs> Yeah, and had some crack, had myself a gaff as well, which was good. So, uh, yeah, no, love my time up there. I've got some lifelong memories of the boys up and going. Crack is like the, what, what is that? Crack's what, like, ha- like you're having a laugh with the lads. You know? Yes. That, I mean, their humour is like, like I said, the English humour is, is, I've heard is pretty good, but their humour is second to none as well. Is it like, I, I know. It's I've, like our Aussie banter. But well, yeah, like, we, yeah, we had a, we had I a. they're just wittier. You well, know? Yeah, yeah. We, we had an Irish kid play with us, Paddy Brophy. Yeah, yeah. Have a more Irish name. Yeah, <laughs> Paddy. <laughs> Paddy Brophy. And it's like, great bloke, but he always speak about the culture back, like back home, like pub on every corner. Oh, 100%. You know, everyone knows everyone. Yeah. It sounds stupid, but like every, every town is a small place yeah. and like you, you get to know people so much better. And like the whole, the whole culture is built around like yeah. drinking and having fun yeah. and spending time with your mates. Is yeah. that. True. Oh, a hundred percent. And Guinness. There's and there's certain rules to drink Guinness. So if you ever need a lesson on that, let me know, boys. Yeah, like right here. Yeah. Let's go. Tell what, what's what are the rules? The, I've, the, I've heard something about the harp. Yeah, you got it. You got to cut the harp. So that's your first one. Effectively, this is what I heard from uh, a, a, a local in one of the pubs. So you got to cut the harp, and the boys would talk about it as well. You cut the harp. So on that on your first sip, you got to cut it. And what's what's the harp? It's like so on the, lost. the harp of the Guinness Guinness the logo. Uh, the Guinness logo. Yeah. So oh. you got to get pretty close to that. And generally, if you so you the have to drink enough so that the line yeah. of the drink is... Oh, so your first yeah. sip needs it's to go down. Uh, yeah. Kind of yeah. And there's also like when you, yeah, I love that. when you pour a Guinness, you don't fully pour it. So you top it up three quarters and then it's got to sit for a minute or two and then you top up the rest. And then yes. again, you've got to let it sit for a bit before you do yes. your thing. And um, I, I mean, this could be wrong and I'll probably get... Sh- Shunted on by all the Irish supporters, <laughs> uh, uh, all the Irish listeners, but I could be yeah. saying this wrong. Massive. But I think you got to like a big following. Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> just big following. Yes. Ireland, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got to split it, like so. You, you got to have circles as it goes down. You got to drink it in like three or uh, yeah. three or three to six sips, and you got to have the perfect way to drink is each rim has got a little bit of froth of white, like for you, every sip that you've had. Right, so yeah. that you can see where you've you've had yeah, the exactly, sip, yeah. and so there's no lying. You don't get yeah, to exactly. Like, yeah, don't yeah. Like, yeah, I did that properly. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, we can tell. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's I've got to ask about um, playing internationally. So obviously, <clears throat> it's different with footy. You can play in Australia, or that's it. But with with um, rugby union being an international game, can you be like, I'd love to go spend some time in Japan. I'm just going to tell my manager. Can you you know put my name out in that sort of league? Like, because obviously you get to just you can move around the world if you wanted to. Like, how does that work? Because they can't watch every game. Yeah, yours. exactly. You're like, yeah, that, the, that's the beauty of rugby union, I guess, is it is such a global game. Um, but yeah, like, unless you're an absolute big dog um, and you've got every single team wanting for you, it can be it can be quite hard to get across, you know, because you've got so much competition, if you know what I mean. Like, obviously, your regular Wallabies and your regular All Blacks, you know, that they, the world's their so they could pretty much go to wherever they wanted in the world. You know, they're going to get big teams offering them big money. Um, yeah, but some, some boys do have the opportunity there. Like, we have lots of guys going to play in France, England, Ireland... Scotland as well, and then also you got there's a league in America now as well, which is like I've got a few mates there playing there, and they're absolutely loving it. They're called the LA Guillotines, and they live like D grade celebrities. I'm telling you, they're loving life. <laughs> the LA Guillotines, I love Gil- that name. Guillotines, Guillotines. Yeah, that is yeah. good. So, and so what, uh, it's an American league. It's an American league. Yeah, oh, it's called MLR. ML- uh, so that's another league that's up and coming. And then obviously you got Japan as well. And you know, there'd be like a lot of hype around that. For oh yeah, yeah. Like I'm that. pretty sure for one of their, I think. One of their first, they had like, I can't remember who it was, was singing their national anthem. Some A grade celebrity yeah. singing uh, national anthem for some F grade celebrities <laughs> in, in, in LA. 
Um, but they're loving their life there. So it's those boys. All right. Well, I think it's time to get onto this story. So I can't. I, I kind of thought that there was some connection with um, the team that that you played with with this OBH story, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think I've heard, but I'll let you go for it. Well, so <clears throat> I might have to pull up some footage, right? But my last Monday, my, my last Mad Monday, retired. Uh, we came back from Gold Coast. We'd been. Um, we'd been like in a hub for like 14 weeks of the 22 weeks, been away from our family. And we'd been, anytime we came back to Perth, we weren't allowed to leave our house. Like we were in a bubble. Yeah, this is over in 2020, like proper yeah. COVID. And so we'd had this like whole big, like long session where like we hadn't been out for 12 months. And anyway, we got home on uh, a Friday night. We had a 24 hour, um, you know, lockdown basically. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We got home and we were locked down for 14 days. We had a two-week lockdown. Yeah, yeah. That was the height back. of yeah. the restrictions. And yeah. so we came out at like 9 a.m. on a Sunday. And like, where do you go on a Sunday? OB. OBH. Yeah. So we go to OBH. I've never been there before. Uh, not no OB. Not, no, 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 no. Are you a not, lookout kind of guy? No, up, no, no. Up, up north? Absolutely yeah. not. I've, I've never been to where we ended up. I've been to OBH plenty of times. Upstairs. On the on the balcony, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. up the top deck. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know it existed. Anyway, we end up up there. We've we've been locked up. We're effectively, seeing the scene here, we've been locked up for twelve months. Yeah. Haven't been out, so it was rowdy. We're the only people there. We're there at ten a.m. We're out at nine a.m. We're there at ten a.m. Like, yeah. no one be the late. If you're late, charge, yeah. If you're late, Guinness has been in the sun <laughs> for the last hour, and it's got an egg in it, and you just scull it when oh, you yeah, walk. Well, so yeah, that's yeah. my only experience with Guinnesses. Yeah. It's just a punishment drink. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so ten a.m. ten a.m. kick off like. Well, well charging, right? It comes to like three, four o'clock. Everyone is absolutely having the best time of their life. And there's quite a, there's quite a lot of people around. And there's clearly another team up there, but they're not footy players. And so we're kind of like watching these guys. Like, it's not awkward, but like whenever you see like other, clearly athletes, it's like, oh, who you guys play for? And, yeah. you know, you might have a piss with somebody. Like, who you, you know, so people started figuring out like it was a rugby team. It was a local rugby team. Yeah. They just won the flag, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I think they did, yeah. They had their... Yeah. <clears throat> they had their medals on and, and jumpers and stuff on. Anyway, um, call goes out. Uh, we're having a boat race. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, right. this is it. So we're having a boat race. So I will put my hand up and say, look, I, I was I was a role player for a lot of my career. I was fines master. I ran uh, footy trips. Been a top three sculler at the club for 14 years. Yeah, well, best on on yeah. the weekend. No, 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 no. Not, not best on like sculling a drink. Like oh, okay. you give me a pint of beer. There wouldn't be many people going around in could Perth that you. could beat me. Well, that's so cool. anytime there's a boat race, you know what a boat race yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like first, there's five people in a row, Charlie. Um, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And you can't start to the first. Yeah, 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 right? Right. All Hand five done. Well. Bang, right? Yes, yeah. So. Sure a few drinks coming out these no, absolutely <laughs> not. So <laughs> boat, boat race goes out. It's going to be rugby v AFL. Like settle the long lost fucking question here. Exactly. Who can drink more piss? Yeah, who drinks more? And like. Rugby union clearly is the answer. Like, yeah. These guys yeah. are a bunch of piss heads. We know that, right? <laughs> especially, well, they, especially my club. This is my local we've, club. We've right? heard from Kyle Goblin here. Like he, He's been on the Australian tour and he's, he's the double D drag master of the rubbish <laughs> bin, right? So yeah, like, bin juice. The yeah, drag bin master juice. of the rubbish bin. Drag master flex. <laughs> yeah. Bin juice, master flex. So rugby's going to win, right? Well, little did they know that I was in. Jake Waterman, very good sculler. Yep. Jack Darling. Very good scholar. Not surprised. Uh, um, there was two more legends involved in our team. Anyway, these boys are carrying on. They've won the flag. They're winning the medallions. They're carrying on like they'd won it before it even started. They didn't expect what happened there. And after a bit of a slow start, we just went whack, whack, whack. One by about one and a half legs. Like no put these way. boys to shame. Put them to shame. While they're all in their rugby, just absolute scenes. I've got the I've got the clips. We might actually play them. Right. Absolute scenes. Our whole team is like. Like going at them hard, like doing these ones. But what I loved about that whole day, usually when something like that happens, it gets a bit narky and then people start fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never got to that stage. It was like genuine happiness. Like we gave it to them and then everyone was hugging it out. Wanted round two, of course. You, you, did. you <laughs> wanted round two. Did we win round two? You boys yeah. wanted round two. Oh, no, we. you didn't have, fucking have, win. You got <laughs> fucking embarrassed <laughs> oh, again. again. We, yeah, we won twice in did a row. You, like, did you go in again? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I was going to say, if we didn't, we've got to have a decider at some point, surely. So, nah, it's, a, it's decided, mate. It's, it's yeah. decided. Your Man boys lost. Second. 
So you heard about that? I'm, I'm I heard about it. Yeah, I had a few boys that were there that day that, that I'm good mates with, and they said, "Yeah, I don't." Rem- they, they they left that bit out about them getting beaten. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to hear this. They heard story they had too. a great day with the Eagles boys, but they left so the boat. They said they had boat races, but they didn't. Well, they we're going to clip this. Who won? We're going to clip this up, and you're going to send it to all the boys. Yeah, definitely. And then if they want to get, Powell, I'm sure they'll get angry this is, about this it. Has come to you. I do have. There you go. I've got. I got video evidence of this shit yeah, as well. It's, like, it's one of the, like the biggest celebrations you'll ever hear. But one thing that I remember from that day, you boys had like this, um, and I reckon it was some of the Islander lads. They had this like this call. It was like, who? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Who? Who? And like there'd be this one like huge. He he was the chief. I'm chief. Sure. Yeah, he was the chief. And he would get up. Is that Uffa? Maybe it was. Maybe his name was Uffa. He was yeah. the chief, yeah. and everyone in the OBH by the end of it would do these <laughs> chants. They started doing it by themselves. Yeah. By the end of the day at six pm, seven pm, the whole OBH is doing these fucking calls, and this chief <laughs> guy is yeah, like, yeah. On, he's got his shoes. Yeah. Is that something? Is that, is that? That's that. That's an Islander thing. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. 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 What did you say about these boys' songs? What did you say about? Yeah. So apparently, after a win, obviously. You know, West Coast have one of the best uh, songs going around in the league. You guys get around in a circle and, and hug and <laughs> sing a song. Did you, Charlie? <laughs> do, do you like the West Coast? No, that was a terrible call, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you like the Dockers theme song? It's it's better than the Eagles one. It's That's, a really bad. It's so both it's West bad. Australians well, letting a lot of Australia down. With there's this. only one I really like. What? It's GWS Giants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but the Western Force doesn't have like a <coughs> old timey song that for some reason te- I I. I've been on the record many times saying we need to cull the team song. I'm not for it. I don't. I think it's pointless. I think it's stupid. You love it, anyways. But the <laughs> I force. Don't love it. I don't love it. At but all. the force. You guys just pick any random song. And yeah. You sing. So How does that work? No, so it's so Marcel Br- Bracky brought it in a couple of years ago. So effectively, we've got a team song that we sing first, and that probably doesn't get as much airtime. Right. But afterwards, we choose a song, and. The song masters choose a song. Sorry, let me correct you there. Uh, correct myself Correct. There. And song we're master. all meant to sing the song as best as we can. And to be honest, if if they if they gave us a bit of pre-warning, we might actually be finding ourselves on The Voice or something, but they don't. <laughs> so we're absolutely dead, dead rubbish. But um, yeah, that's good fun. Good fun. So the song master... Is this uh, after a win? Goes okay. We're gonna sing. And we're gonna this, sing love. This Jack. is the song we're singing. This is uh, Britney he, Spears. He, hit me, baby, one more time. Uh, something like that. Toxic. Anything, yeah, toxic. You know, whatever. I, I put in a few Britney requests. Big Britney on, fan. Yeah, massive, massive. Fallen on cold. Toxic's her best song, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm big Britney fan. Love um, and effectively, yeah, they just pick a song and we're meant to sing along and hopefully you know it and you can sing way louder than uh, someone who doesn't. And you have to look read the sheet. I think I saw a Taylor song the other day, right? Like a. Was there a Taylor Swift um, love story? Love story. Yeah. 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 So there's, you know, 15 of the, the sorry, the buffers guys in WA <laughs> just belting out. Belting love story. That's, Taylor Swift. That, that's, that's, a, that's right. an absolute classic for the boys in the Western Force. Really? Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So we've kind of bounced around everything. Played for the Wallabies, played ACT, Ireland, uh, come back here to the Western Force. What's what's Twiggy Forrest's involvement with the Western Force? So he tries to put together the league, and it gets sort of you know struck down with COVID and and the rest of it. Does he own the Western Force still? Yeah, yeah. So Twiggy owns the Western Force. We're moving back into the CBA, as it's called, so in line with all the other teams on the East Coast. But effectively, Twiggy owns it. And yeah, yeah. Thank for all the boys or the young kids in Western Australia who want to play professional rugby one day, um, and the likes of us who have a job at the Western Force, you know, we wouldn't be here today without Twiggy Forrest. So. I mean, that's, I, yeah. I know he's got a lot of money. Twiggy's one of the richest yeah. guys in WA and Australia and yeah. whatever else. But uh, to do that, you're right. Like, yeah. he's supporting an industry, effectively. Like, oh, an definitely. entire industry in yeah, a state. Exactly, yeah. And it's not like it's a huge money-making industry. He's not like, you know, I swear, I could, I could earn some serious coin no, off exactly. this. I mean, he's mean mining. So, like, that's what I mean. It's yeah. like, yeah. he's not doing yeah. footy for, like, Footy's yeah. not going to compete with his mining yeah, exactly. income. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure our expense is like a tiny little. They're, 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 their stationary budget's probably way bigger than our budget every year. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It, we, yeah, like I said, without him and um, the Forrest family, you know, we we wouldn't be be here playing and doing the dream uh, dream job that we want. Uh, you can answer this or not, but I've spoken to a couple of other guys that have played on the team over the years, so I can just say that it's. Yeah. You know, it's my story, not yours. But does Twiggy come down at halftime and just let the boys know, 
about you know maybe what to do tactically at times or just not, maybe not, not since I've been there. But I've heard that the boys every now and then, if they're not playing well, he'll come down and give them a rev up, and rightfully so, you know. Because he, I he, love a good, passionate rev up from Tui I and get the love boys going, that. you know. So owner of the, the person team that writes your checks yeah. comes down and goes, boys, like this is what I need to see. Exactly. Yeah. Are you going to do it or you're yeah, not going to do yeah. it? Yeah, you no, can't no. say no to that. Actually, no. In um. The start of this year, when we were playing the Brumbies in Canberra, he actually came into the change rooms and gave us a bit of gave us a bit of a chat, which was good, you know. And we went on to almost winning that game. We we lost in the last minute, unfortunately, but we should have won that game. But yeah, no, it was good, good fun. The boys enjoy it. Get the boys going, and get a bit of a out when the owners around, you know. And he, the writes owners, your, he writes our contracts, so of course, yeah. yeah. The owners around other leagues get involved in the teams. Look, it's not it's not so much in Australia because most of it's owned by Australian Rugby Union or whatever. Yeah, but right. um, you get a lot of that in like Europe. In France, especially because you got all the big owners in France that, um, yeah, you know, they buy these clubs and they just got an extension of their ego effectively, and they got to yep. make sure that they want to win. And you know, so they, I've heard some pretty hectic stories coming out of there. Of coaches come in and not being happy and bang fired on the spot kind of thing. So yep. yeah, it's pr- but you know what, it's passionate and the, something that they love. So good on them. What uh, what's the season been like so far for you guys? Your vice captain. Yeah, you know it's, it's it's been a tough one at the moment. Uh, still looking for those 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 songs at the end of the game. You know we haven't been able to sing for a couple of weeks. You need to ramp the fines up. I know, hundred percent. Yeah, I yeah. hear that. And I'm like, yeah, just get the just get yeah, get the yeah, get, get, the, get the atmosphere going. Um, yeah, yes, it's been a bit of a disappointing start for us. This, uh, we only well, I think we're two from six or two from seven. So, but I mean, like we're coming up against the Kiwi side, which should be a good challenge for us, and hopefully we can just turn the season around a bit. Um, Are you traveling much? Uh, we did, did a lot of our travel at the start because obviously we thought that the borders were shut, so we did a lot of our, all our away games in a bit of a mini hub at the start of the season. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we've got a, another trip to Melbourne this week. Uh, we've got... The, um, it's like the glory run with all, all, the, play, all the teams are playing. Um, and then a couple of weeks in New Zealand, which is always fun as well. Yeah. How does travel work with such big bodies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're always trying to get the exit row. So we, 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 we don't get business class, but we, we try and get exit row. So, I mean, like, there used to be a rule in the thing where if you travel to South Africa or New Zealand over six hours or up to Japan, that you'd get business class. So everyone on the team? Everyone would get on on the team. But um, uh, flights so below six, six hours, you wouldn't get business class. So you've class. been to the penthouse and now you're, you, you, you're getting business class at one point time in your career then, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. We, we, we were, and the boys are racking up the contest for frequent flyer points. Yeah. So that... On those double D tours to Europe as well, we're spending first class in Dubai Lounge and Qantas Lounge, and which was always a good fun as well. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, <laughs> do you own a bird? A bird? Yes. My mum owns a bird. I, I read something about you this week. <laughs> Oh no! What have you What have you heard, sir? You you you've you you own a bird. You, you, a bird. You adopted a bird. You had a bird fly into your premises. That is true. That is true. Is yeah. this still living with you? This 100%, bird. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. To be honest, oh, no, not with me personally. He lives with my mum at my mum's place. So, uh, at, at my mum's old or the old family home before we sold it. Uh, bird just flew in one day and it seemed way too tame and way too like cuddly with us i was like this is not this is a pet this is someone's, someone's pet. escaped yeah pet. anyway we put, put some feelers out on all the facebook groups and all the bird groups and um t- got, got no bites to no avail <laughs> all the bird all the bird groups 100 percent. my girlfriend's on it she's a crazy bird lady as well so like, um, <laughs> what sort of bird is it um a wirra a wirra a wirra yeah uh, have you named it uh yeah kobe kobe yeah, Kobe nice. Tweety Bird. So, it, well, I mean, my girlfriend had a name for it. My brother had a name for it. They had a big fight over it. So it's now Kobe Tweety Bird, the co- combination of both. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got this bird. And unfortunately, well, when we were all staying with my mum, we were living in its house. Like, it runs the house. Like, literally, it does what it wants in the house. And if we don't listen to it, we're in trouble kind of thing. <laughs> um, you've had some sort of arrangement with Vix in the past. Is that right? Vix, yeah, I've Vicks. heard that you're um you like their product and you use it quite a bit. <laughs> what the Vix? Uh, yeah, spon- yeah, sponsored yeah. by Vix Vapor Rub <laughs> early in your days. <laughs> what? Why is that funny? Uh, no, no, I, I'm just just trying to find out where that would have come from. <laughs> <laughs> no, if that's but not true, that's no. Um, 
Uh, I definitely don't have a sponsorship with Vicks. Okay. Do you need one? Do I, you need one? To be honest, I yeah, think the only... Uh, the colds and the, flus the, in your The time. only thing I can think of is that one of the boys are trying to stitch me up and say I've got a big nose and I just need a bit of Vicks up my nose. You know, that's the only <laughs> thing I can think of. Or that my old man was like, mate, you got a cold, put some Vicks and rub Vicks on your chest or something like that. Yeah. That's, yeah. Can I ask a bit of, uh, a couple of bigger um, rugby union pitch, uh, questions? So, like, rugby union, so my kind of knowledge was based around, like, growing up, I watched, like, Gregan and... Yeah. Arkham and the, yeah, the glory days. Johnny, Roth? Um, Roth? yeah, Joe Roth. Johnny, Johnny Roth. what's that guy's name from England? Johnny, Johnny Wilkins. No, yeah. not fucking Johnny Wilkins. He played for <laughs> fucking England. <laughs> yeah, but Fuck he that used to play England. Fucking yeah. sunk the World Cup, mate. Yeah, yeah I know. Like, no, I'm Jeez. talking about Australian rugby and like yeah. and people loving it. Like maybe it was just because I was younger, but I really feel like the Wallabies were this kind of like up there with the Australian yeah. cricket team. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But it, yeah. but it's not now. Is that no? It's definitely yeah. Is that performance or is that? What is that? Uh, to be honest, like this, this is like the biggest debate in rugby at the moment. It's yeah. like how we've fallen away from that. Put in like from that point in two thousand and three, where it was probably one of the you know top three, yeah, you know, sporting codes in Australia at the time, to like where we're really struggling. And obviously, that's got a lot to do with performance and then kind of mismanagement at the top level as well. So, but yeah, that's you know that's a heated debate within the rugby circles as to why we we've fallen off the and the sort of chopping and changing with the yeah. leagues doesn't help with that like but yeah it doesn't like and then obviously like you know we super rugby got extended and it became too hard and too complicated to follow so that kind of lost a bit of viewership as well so and then obviously wallabies weren't performing as well as they should have been so it's just a combination of everything unfortunately and yeah we find ourselves where we yeah w sometimes the australian rugby union struggle financially as well a bit with that so yeah, no, hopefully we got some good guys at the top level in place and, you know, I think we're all one head in the right direction and rugby is heading back in the right direction. <coughs> I, but I think the model works really well for AFL and they, you know, they've really, they've done a great job at promoting the game and hitting those grassroots. I think that's where Rugby Australia really probably struggled and they're learning now that they probably should have put a lot more investment into the grassroots and Rather built the game. And yeah, exactly. And ventured out from this so-called private schoolboys game, if you know what I mean. And yeah. You know. And we might be in a different position. Like, now. what's the what's the television rights right now? Like, Foxtel holds them in, no, in no, Australia. No, we, no, we, we're on Stan Sport now. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I mean, like our 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 TV deal is like nothing compared to league and AFL. Like, we're it's chalk and cheese. And it's all the numbers game. Yeah, exactly. Right? One hundred percent. It makes perfect sense. So that's and that's why the boys get paid a lot more than us. You know, it's interesting. It's starting to swap to streaming services. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the AFL goes that way within the next five years like their cba comes up at the end of next year like gil gil's retired ceo his kind of mandate is to get the new one done like i wouldn't be surprised if it goes starts going towards that more streaming kind of mm, it, it kind of is like with ko that's sort of what they're doing with ko is yeah kind of all of that the other one i want to ask you was like the other exposure i've had the most for union is all blacks and their culture and like it was certainly something at afl level um when we were playing when we were at west coast were playing their best footy we spoke a lot about their culture and and i've read books about it and, and we've had it preached to us about different things like 2018 one thing that i can remember off the top of my head is like we had this clean the sheds kind of thing which was stolen mm. kind of from the all blacks yeah. about they'd always you know sweep the sheds yeah. like they you know go to an away room they make a mess well yeah. don't leave until you clean your shit up yeah. and, it, and it kind of flows through into your life or it's meant to be anyway um 2018 there was footage after we won the flag celebrating like lunatics had this big thing um we kind of had our last team meeting and like it was like okay just go and clean your shit up before we go out on the stage and get awarded our medals kind of thing like it was it was definitely like one thing that like i guess we stole from union so like the all black kind of culture is that something internally for someone who plays rugby union that's not from new zealand that you respect or know about or oh, like yeah, or like look definitely, at it from afar yes. and like geez i fucking wish we had that like what's the yeah well I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that you got to get your culture right to be a successful su successful side now, obviously you got to need the talent uh, and the coaching but then also you got to have the right culture and you know for the all blacks in 2007 they had a bit of a disaster world cup you know they were touted to be the next like winners of that world cup and they didn't go too well in that uh and they had this big revamp and restructuring and reculture like input and boost and ever since then you know they've been the top dogs of of the sport for the last like 15 16 years so wow. um yeah and it's based on i mean obviously they've got the quality they've got great players they've got yeah. super talent but they've got a they've got a massive culture there 
Um, and it, it, it shows in the way they play and how, how much they respect playing for the jersey. You know, that's their greatest honour for them. Um, and you can see it. You can see it. It means so much to them to play for the All Blacks, you know. And you, if if the All Blacks lose on the weekend, the whole country's in mourning and it's a bit <laughs> of a depression. And they, 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 they got, the government's like, how can we stimulate the economy now? Kind of thing. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Just Caesar we, Ardern's on Yeah, the exactly. Do we need to drop the interest rates, guys? Like, we need to pick me up. <laughs> like, yeah, so... But yeah, no, like I, I've actually read the book and I forgot they've got this thing. That's, it's 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 a it's a mouldy word and I, I think you might know it. Maybe I'm not too sure. I can't remember what it is, but it's effectively about being the people or being you know exactly like what you said, like sweep the sheds. You know, not, yeah, like no good good people, like exactly good leads people. to good performance. Kind exactly, of thing, right? yeah, exactly, yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah. It's just an interesting one. Like I just yeah, I wonder. Like I, I look at union like. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's not. Like, what? What actually sp- s- like splits good sides? Like, do, do, does a good side have tougher, bigger, cleaner players? Like, or they have quicker guys on the outside? Like, what's the difference between a good and a bad side? Yeah, because well, I mean, everyone I, can play the game, right? So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think yeah, it's, it's down to a lot of like that kind of minor detail. You know, I th- it's, I'm sure it's the same with you guys in AFL as well. Like, it, it comes down to that point where you get to those high and higher levels it becomes that attention to detail and then obviously your culture as well you know yeah. what kind of culture you're breeding in there are you breeding a successful culture with high standards versus a team that probably is a bit sloppy around the standards and you you see those habits kind of creep in and the next minute you're not playing as well as you should be and yeah no I'm um, you know it's probably got a lot to do with you know, your culture and then and then again like I say talent's a big thing as well because like what one mistake in union is a direct turnover like yeah you know like yeah. um you lie on the ball you don't roll off or yeah, yeah, exactly. i don't know the rules that well yeah. but i know i'm like i used to watch it a fair bit like one mistake turnover you, you don't have time to fuck around like, yeah exactly yeah so you gotta that, that's yeah, where and you know you know that's coming up in monday review as well there's nothing worse <laughs> than you make a mistake you're like I'm definitely going to be schooled by the coaches on Monday, and this is going to be in the footage. Yeah, that's not a good feeling. No. Have you had a couple of those? Oh, mate, my uh, whole career I, was exactly fucking fourteen years. That, yeah, exactly. You're bound to have at least. Don't worry, I've had a few. I've got way too many as well. You should put your hand up. Yep, sorry, sir. That's me. I'll cop it. Genuinely, the guys that actually cop it the most are usually the guys that can cop it. Yeah. Did you say that? Like yeah, I, I would say like, so. Yeah, we've got one guy who cops it a lot, but he puts his hand up and he's great. Yeah, yeah you got to yeah. accept it. Like, exactly. But that's the thing. That's the whole point. I mean, you know, you don't make this mistake on on purpose no you know, and and they're not singling out guys that are going to crumble a bit with a bit of yeah. attention on it, it yeah. it's always kind of the guys have you got any more questions for Kyle because I've got some social media stuff let's get the social media alright here we go social media social media you know all good. about this yeah. or what no I don't but I'm yes, finding out now don't fucking lie social <laughs> media big. Yeah. yes correct social media powered by Cameo you on Cameo Cameo. I saw no. you on Pickstar. Pickstar. No, yeah, I'm on Pickstar. But, but Cameo. I've never, never done any work with Pickstar. Cam- yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cameo. 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 I mean, the rugby union pool is a bit lighter here yeah, compared to you boys, I'm sure. Well, no. Well, you'd be surprised. Dan gets quite a bit of hits over on Cameo. Mostly <laughs> foot fetish stuff, but... Oh, right. Right. There we go. Right. So so we're on Cameo. Um, this is brought to you by Cameo. Basically, it's a celebrity messaging service. So people want to hear a story about you and your days over in France at Moulin Rouge where well, yeah. they jump on Cameo and they say, yeah, yeah, there we go. and then you go, oh, let me you set your price, you make a video, Perfect. free money, man. All right, so, but social media, which you said you don't know about, but I'll tell you what, I bet you do. I um, will now. It's one of the, uh, it's one of the all time, uh, I guess probably global, globally recognized podcasting segments. Um, basically, the people ask you the questions. That's what it Perfect. is. All right, social it. media. So this is from that Karina chick. Um, how many times have you accidentally sworn in interviews? <laughs> wow. Okay, well, that's big. This doesn't count. Yeah, this... Do- oh, I mean, like, this one doesn't count. I've dropped a few swear words today. But I had the privilege and honour of saying the F-bomb twice in the last two years on post-game or pre-game interviews. No, you haven't. I promise you that. How have you done that? What's it- <laughs> After the win against Melbourne last year, I was so excited. I was like, yeah, the fucking boys. <laughs> yeah, the fucking boys. <laughs> what That's was the crazy. question that got you to <laughs> so yeah, the how do you feel? How, how do you feel about the win? I was like, ended up, yeah, the effing boys, and we're, and <sighs> then last, funny you say that the uh, the other time I just swore was like two weeks ago against the Rebels as well, and I was getting interviewed pre-game, and it was like pre-game. They do, they do. <laughs> this, man. I haven't even played yeah. yet. Well, they do this thing where they kind of interview while you're warming up, you know, and I'm right. like in the moment with the boys again. And I'm like, they asked me how they thought I thought the Rebel side. I was like, yeah, they're an effing good team. They're a fucking good team, you know, so. 
Yeah, I've dropped it twice. Do you get and any? And now four or five times. Oh, no, this is, this is fine. This is yeah. different. Do, do, you have a call, do you look at your phone, Twiggy? Is calling? Oh, I mean, I get... I just get sent so many things from the all my mates. You know, a lot of those soaked boys that were doing boat races, <laughs> Willie over here, were, they would be sending me messages. Telling Can't me wait to get this boat race out yeah. to the soak slates. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, who, who, who would be the main culprit over there that would have been letting the team down in the skull off? In the skull off. Jesus. Ah, this is your chance to throw someone on the bus down there. Mate, if Rossi, if, if Rossi Palferman was in the boat race, would we have Classic chance, Rossi right? Palferman, yeah. yeah. Should have, could have, would have, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't quite get it done. Now, this is from Soph Miller 1. Uh, what's yeah. your thoughts This on is important. This is a... V- this could be the most important question you asked today. Just yeah. Can I have a serious face now? Oh, no. no. Well, you, you, you take <laughs> it where you want. It's a very important question. Um, your thoughts on the filet o fish Filet-o-fish. Filet-o-fish yeah. at McDonald's. I'm glad you don't even know what it is. Um, you know what it is. Like a yeah, filet I'm, I'm, I'm filet a fish I'm a full meat man, to be honest. I got, I got the Big Mac there. So okay. you wouldn't yeah. be... Oh, actually, I actually love a cheeseburger from Macca's. You wouldn't be rolling in ordering a fillet of fish? No, no, not me. Haven't done it yet, so you can't you can't knock what you haven't tried. Thank you. Yeah, yeah very so good. Joel, just, just so you know what you're missing out on, mate, it's a dry, disgusting... Um, uh, may not even be seafood type yeah. burger from McDonald's. One one, are you really you questioning what kind of meat's in there? Kind of it's Dan's only order at McDonald's. And no I, way. <laughs> just an absolute. Mate, you're a spear fisherman. You, you you can appreciate yeah. fish. I'm you're a spear sure fisherman. Like it. Attempt, a rugby a, a, attempt a spear fisherman. Attempt a spear fisherman. You've got to be able to hold your breath a while to do that. Uh, I try to. I try to. Where are you spear fishing? That scares the shit out of me, man. Yeah, with out of Roto, uh, up north. Roto, um, where there's sharks everywhere. Yeah, no, oh. it's good. I absolutely love it. That's Probably, besides playing rugby, being fully immersed in the moment, I love going for a bit of a spearfish. It's one of the, my f- favorite hobbies, to be honest. Why? Why? I just enjoy it. You know the challenge of trying to hunt for a fish and holding your breath, and you know it's one of those sports where you can always push yourself to go a little bit further, a little bit deeper. And yeah, and when you shoot a big fish and show the picture up and annoy people on Instagram, that's always pretty <laughs> fun as well. I think I've had a fellow fish that he's probably yeah. caught a fish. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if it tastes good. It yeah. must have tasted good, yeah. you know. It was probably back in 2013, and they've just pulled it out at McDonald's. <laughs> they pulled it out of the deep <laughs> freeze and chucked it in a fellow fish. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's good. B underscore Riles 94. Uh, what was your reaction when the Western Force was axed from Super Rugby, and how did it feel when they came back in? Because you weren't there, right? Like yeah, you, exactly, you, yeah. you were at a far. Like yeah, no. So yeah, for me, I was obviously disappointed. You know, the Western Force was the club side that I looked up to and wanted to play for when I was a young kid growing up. And at the time when, when the, they did get axed, I had a lot of co- real close friends. So I felt for them and, you know, I felt for the force, you know, I always had a dream of coming back to play for the force one day, you know, I went away to try and grow my game, grow as a player, grow as a person as well. And there was always a dream and that kind of, kind of became non-reality at that point. But um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a sad time because I had, Generally thought that the Western Force shouldn't have been the team that was axed, and we can go down that road, but we've spoken about it a million times. And um, yeah, it was, it was sad, and I was sad for the boys that were going through that p- period. You know, like trying to play Super Rugby and play games each week, but realizing that their livelihood might be in jeopardy. You know, it would have been a tough time for them. Mm. Um, Jay Jones underscore no, not Jay Jones. Um, who was the best you've ever played with? Played with? Mm. Uh, I think Quade Cooper is up there. Um, Kurtley Beal, those players are just their their rugby knowledge and their ability to put you in put you in space and just their ability to read the game is like second to none. You know their skills, like you you can see why they played for their country so many times. Um, yeah, just absolutely love playing alongside those boys. Uh, uh, yeah, they're quality players. What about um, Fletch one nine two zero one two nine zero transition between Zimbabwe and Perth? What was that like? So you, you did you did speak about that a little bit as a kid. Yeah. Um, was there anything else that really stood out to you? A change in culture? You got family back there still? Uh, I got yeah, a lot of family in South Africa, uh, and a bit of family in Zimbabwe. But yeah, mainly mainly when that kind of situation happened in Zim, everyone kind of dispersed from Zim throughout the world. Um, I think quite a few people are actually going back now and they're finding that they're having a really nice lifestyle down there. But um, yeah, like I said, it was a bit of a shock to the system coming from yes sir, no sir, <laughs> yes ma'am, no ma'am, good morning ma'am to yeah, having a bit of fun in classrooms and getting away with murder. So, um, to piss off miss. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a little bit of that. Fuck you miss. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, I yeah. said fuck. Jonah Tuckaloa style. <laughs> <you know? Yeah. laughs> Do you... Um, do you still call traffic lights robots? I definitely do. Yeah. I definitely do. Yeah, I call it a robot. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, this last one, we've sort of mentioned it's uh, about Ireland, but I think the second part of the question is a yes or a no or like a bit of explanation. Yeah. So Sarah you, underscore FR. Your experience of playing in Ireland and are you a Guinness convert? Still ordering it? Um, I haven't ordered it in Australia. Um, <laughs> so that's a no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard if you go to a pub that serves it regularly, it's top quality. So that's what mm. I've heard from all, the, all my Irish folks. So... If you go into a cup and you're you're the only person drinking it there, then don't order it because it's yep. going to be rubbish out of sight of Ireland. But um, definitely while I was in Ireland, I loved my Guinness. It was mm. the first drink or two for me, and then I moved on to something different. But yeah, I absolutely love my Guinness. Um, and yeah, I love playing in Ireland. Like I had an absolute crack there. Um, the boys were amazing. You know that the fans were great, and you know that you know had a great time there. Um, they they do this something so on my street where I lived, right there like you said there was five pubs on, on my street where i lived right? <laughs> and within within the town there's like i'd say close to 100 pubs within like just the town center of like a two 3k radius right so every year oh, yeah. the, the the club does this thing called the chicken run which is like i don't know you guys would have played it's a social event where the one guy gets selected and he becomes a chicken and he has to go and hide in a pub somewhere and then you get split into groups and from there you have to when you walk into a bar if the chicken's not there you you have to drink a drink at your own expense and move on to the next pub until you find where the chicken is. And the chicken's obviously got the kitty and he's drinking free piss until people join him. So he's <laughs> going on. So, yeah. So we did the chicken run and uh, I was I was a chicken one year, which was great fun. So do, I had do they do? Oh, you were the chicken? I so was the chicken. Do you get to send clues? Uh, yeah, yeah. At certain times, like clues, like you get knocked off. These pubs are all knocked off or this is knocked off. And I've seen like different versions of it. But yeah. like basically like guys might start in pairs at all different locations. And then, you know, if the chicken's hidden well enough, like <laughs> they're just like big groups of guys like all linking up because they'll like get to the same pub and they're like, all right, let's go to this one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you just get yeah. these revolving. Yeah. But if there's a hundred pubs in the fucking town. Yeah, no, they, 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 they cross a lot off before they like, before we start the, the the day events, but um, yeah, no, it was great fun. I think great we fun. figured out our back chat Christmas party is a <laughs> back chat. What in Ireland? Back chat Ireland. Back chat Ireland. Back chat Ireland. You could uh, probably do it in Freo, to be honest. I reckon. Yeah, get away with it. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, you know anything more for the big fella? Let's. No, let's I think on the back of that, we've got to get you to an AFL game. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I think we're going to tee that yeah, up. We'll, we'll tee that up. Maybe yeah, we'll like. That. I reckon maybe make I'll, it a, another Freo game. I reckon. No, <laughs> well, Freo or West Coast? If you got to pick a t- yeah, like you can both. Mate, I'm one hundred percent West Coast. So yeah, bad luck, Charlie. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry, Charlie. Sorry Charlie. about that, mate. <laughs> um, he's I reckon this real badly. No, yeah, yeah. He's just I mean, Charlie's the only Freo guy yeah. in the room, effectively. So <laughs> sorry, mate. He's going to handle yeah. that torch. Um, and, and likewise to you boys, I've got to get you guys down to a force. Oh, no, because yeah. I was going to say, like, yeah. you haven't asked me. I've never yeah. been to a union game. Yeah, 100%. We've got to get yeah, you guys okay. down. Roy, and and we're playing steps. all the Kiwi sides, so you're going to see some top quality coming through. Uh, we'll get a, get a home game. Less yeah, quality still. than Western Force, though. Western yeah, Force 100%. Is up yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Don't, don't bring my media training into... F- we're <laughs> building that culture, right? Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Western Force, up here. self-belief and confidence. Where, where do you play? We play at HBF Park, the old Perth Oval or whatever. Yeah, like... Um, Highgate, nor, uh, yeah, like leader, no, no, not even leader, or, uh, yeah, like the back end of Mount Morley, basically, correct, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, we're in, right, we'll get yeah, there, perfect, we'll get you on, great deal. Sounds um, good. I know you want, I know you know all of this, mate, but um, finishing up, mm. if you want to find us, backchatpodcast.com.au, you knew that one, right? I definitely social did, yeah, media, backchat double underscore on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, you can get us on YouTube. If you want to see the man, the myth, the legend, Carl Godwin in person, <laughs> you got to subscribe to YouTube. So if you just got to this point in the interview and you didn't watch it, mm. suggest you jump over to YouTube and subscribe there. The God. We're, we're still doing Reddit. <laughs> I don't hear much from Reddit from you. Sne- sneaking and subtle. You banned. Yeah, I'm back. I'm you, back. You fucking banned. banned Reddit a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Send us an email. Hello at backchatpodcast.com.au. That's it. Bye-bye.